Achievers. Welcome to a special Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of 216. It's going to be a day late than usual because I do some accommodations, but I think it's going to make the episode far better. Um, I'm joined today by the one only, Emmett Watkins Jr., of course. Hi, welcome back. Here I am, straight out of the Bahamas. Straight out of the Bahamas, <laughs> of course. That is probably what I imagine you walked into the Bahamas. There were seven stalls. One lady grabbed you, pulled you over, and was like, you got to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they probably did that to my mom because she brought this shirt back when she went to the Bahamas. So. Got it. Got it. I got it. I went to... Um, I went on a cruise with my now wife, then girlfriend, in like 2018 or something like that. And hmm. we went to, we went to, a, I think we went to the Bahamas. It's like, there was like three stops. I'm already forgetting. But when we walked up, we walked around. And I know I, I, you could tell like that they live off tourists. Like there's just stalls of stuff. Like it's it was like a flea market. And I remember it vividly this old uh caribbean woman grabbing my wife pulling her forward being like look at this like like <laughs> and clearly trying to get her to buy things and i was like all right let's relax let's relax i get it i bought it. i bought some stuff though I bought some stuff. look and, in in the caribbean any everyone's trying to get their money everyone's oh, trying yeah. to get their thing going so yeah, i bought some oh, i bought folks. some i think i bought like a superman necklace and then she got something i think i don't know and and everything Supergirl is necklace. incredibly overpriced, but you know, I get it. I get it. Over the there. vacation experience. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. You, you, you agree to to overspend on whatever it is. It was like a it was probably plastic. <laughs> we had a great <laughs> well, you time, use though. plastic to get the plastic. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Yep, yep, yep. Emma, how are you? This has I'm been doing pretty it, good. it's been a short time since you've been here, so it's not like you have a lot, you know, a lot of life updates, but I do still want to ask, how are you? I, you I'm now a father. That's what changed. No, I'm kidding. Wow, that that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine our real <laughs> <laughs> unprotected? You look unprotected like such a protected me or man? <laughs> I would think you were protected at all times. God, I'm literally cosplaying as it with this head square. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, but no, no, no. Um, no, nah, it's been good. Uh, you know, just starting the year off. Uh, I said I was going back to school. I still am going back to school. Got an A so far in the online class I'm doing right now. Nice. Um, getting ready for the ramp up for next semester and also planning summer vacations and whatnot. Got a family, va- got a family reunion in June and in May. I think we talked about it. We're probably going to do a road trip from like, Georgia to Las Vegas. We're gonna wow. just spend a week driving. Wow! Yeah, I have family in Vegas that they, they want me to go over there, and I keep thinking about doing it. Um, they're like, "Yeah, come over and we'll show you like the town and stuff." Uh, and it's such I a strange. Yeah, yeah, and I I remember telling my father because it's my mother's side about it, and he was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> like, he was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, just." Timing you can stay stuff. in Vegas cheaply? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, we will definitely go. We we sh- me and my wife want to do it at least before we um have a baby and these things. So, it will happen. It's just it, you know, you get offered and you're like, "Yeah, thank you. We'll keep it in mind." And then, you know, time passes. But I definitely mm-hmm. want to do it. You in Vegas sounds hilarious cuz you're incredible. You're like too respectful. So, like you'd <laughs> probably apologize to people as you walk by. Well, I've been to Vegas as a child. The trash can. Yeah, we we took a family vacation there a long time ago. A I might have family been... vacation to. I don't know the justification for it. It wasn't. <laughs> we didn't go to Vegas. We went to L.A. and then we drove to Vegas for the last two days. Uh-huh. But it was interesting. Saw just one or two things I probably shouldn't have seen at age fourteen. Okay, but you know, yeah. I was borderline appropriate for it. it. I had probably been encountered with those concepts at that point already. Mm. So yeah, you had it's there. Fine. You knew to, you exactly knew not to do it. <laughs> You know, if you did it, your dick would shrivel up and fall off. Like, I can't do it. They said it would kill me. Absolutely. You lick, Absolutely. You lick a meth that you're dead. That's what mm-hmm. So I decided, hey, why don't I get in a committed relationship first and then go back once I'm an adult? Yeah, yeah. That's the way yeah. to do it. Yeah, I'll, yeah. For me, I'll be like, I'll go back married. <laughs> 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 Completely fucking up the debauchery of it, but it's fine. I, I'm not a big gambling guy either, so maybe. I don't even know what I would do there. Be honest, maybe I'll gamble either. Just, just to be, 
I just want to walk around the little malls with blue sky painted on the ceiling. I want to go to the uh, diamond, not diamond. I'm sorry, the pyramid, the glass. Pyramid oh thing. yeah, that's called. Isn't that a Bass Pro that. Shop? <laughs> that is also a Bass Pro Shop, I believe. Yes. <laughs> okay. Also, okay. <laughs> there are two. That makes sense. Pyramids made of glass for some reason in the U.S. Uh, what are we doing? We gotta steal black culture so much we build two pyramids. We do. We do. We do. We do. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> You guys have had it pretty good. We gotta, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta reel you back every now and then. That's good. That's good. Oh boy, go go to Ohio and see if they'll play that new Beyonce country song. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> see how that plays out. Deep yeah, roar, it might not get you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll exactly. Drive my windows down. You get shot. How fast do you think you get shot? Maybe Ten, fifteen. Well, however fast it is, I'm gonna be driving faster. So don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you oh, think boy. of the uh we're f i don't i don't give a shit we're gonna wait what did you think of the jay-z call out on the uh grammys i thought that was weird am i am it, i crazy it was partially weird when you consider hey you're one of the richest people in the world married to one of the richest people in the world <laughs> who already has dozens and I dozens of grammys on one hand that makes sense yeah she has like i want to say over 20 grammys three something like that yeah so on one they, hand it's a little bit weird there on the other hand it's like well they do like to not give album of the year to anyone <laughs> that looks like beyonce I, they I, really I, love doing that except for that one year 20 yeah, years ago I, I remember someone bringing that up and i was like oh maybe I, and I, I felt that and i was like one you make a good point and i thought it as well it's like jay-z's out here saying my <laughs> y'all don't do my wife that. right let's get I'm in the like, jet i'm like wow you are so out of touch i don't give two shits what you say but i thought it was interesting seeing this guy think like how dare you <laughs> how dare you not give her an album of the i mean i don't know she won everything else i don't get it but then i saw someone's like well she won the quote-unquote black categories so like they're not recognizing her and the other ones like is that i don't know i i never saw it that that's way. a thing i get it it's i guess when you say urban contemporary, yeah, the word urban's in there for a reason. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I, I, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I, I, when it was put that way, I was like, okay, I kind of, I could see that if, if it does kind of feel like you just went in the the quote unquote black category. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, I get it. I just, mm -hmm. I, it was hard to not see Jay Z complaining. Like I was like, <laughs> bro, well, the Jay Z no. complaining thing felt. Just the, from his tone, it was less of a y'all need to do right by her in a serious way, more of just like I'm gonna make a joke about her thing that's actually real, mm, and I'm gonna yeah. just slide it off as a joke. But everyone in the but audience knows, probably knew, I okay, mean, yeah, that's actually a thing. Dead serious, <laughs> <laughs> dead. Serious. Absolutely, because you couldn't get up there and actually strictly talk about that shit as the wife of the woman who's right in the audience too. That would be too weird. But you can totally yeah. make a joke about it and have it go viral. Yeah, I wonder if um they were kind of happy he did that. It was like maybe this is our Will Smith slap moment. Like I like maybe this will be viral. <laughs> it wasn't, but I wonder if the Grammy people were like, yes, <laughs> like, yes, someone get up there and argue with him. Eh, I I don't know about that because here's the thing: he's talking shit on the Grammys, the institution itself. Yeah. So but... like you know, they're they're not quote tweeting that video on their yeah, twitter good point i just feel like going viral to to that specific side of the entertainment is so key to what they want and it's also it's like who's watching the grammys I, maybe it is popular but like is it people still watching the grammys i feel like that's going the way of the oscars hmm. at this point it low-key i'll say if you're trying to make viral waves as the grammys then you do what they did this year and you give Tyla, who's a pop artist from South Africa, her first award ever as a Grammy, as a new artist, you give Victoria Monet, who's been making music for several years, finally getting three Grammys in one night. Oof. You give uh, SZA a couple Grammys as well. You give all these black women that have been making really big moves in music, you give them a bunch of awards. Now, we still have the critiques of, basically, long story short, people are upset. It took so long to get a seat at the table. Now that we've had a seat at the table for a while, it's like, why can't we sit at the head table? Why can't we sit at the main chair? We're always we're always near it, but we're never in it. So I think that's the conversation that you're having, not just in music, but in a lot of things. Because, you know, the 60s were a long time ago. <laughs> we passed that. So now it's like, all right, so what's next? We already had someone at the head of state. Why can't we be head of other things? And, mm. you know, we'll get there slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah, it reminds me of... Um... 
Is her name Jada Will Smith's wife? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It Jada Pinkett Smith. She she was like blowing up. I think it was twenty twenty Oscars for not mm. nominating any black films because Moonlight wasn't nominated. Is that right? Am I fucking stuff up? I think I am. Uh, Moonlight like that. won Best Picture that year. So, uh, but there, I there I, she did blow up. I don't know what year it was, but she did have a you know she was very upset online because yeah, there I weren't a lot that. of black filmmakers nominated and whatnot and i yeah. think the very next year is when moonlight happened <laughs> yeah yeah they were like you get one then they, like that's the most we'll do <laughs> do you understand i still need to yeah. watch moonlight. it's really good it's really good it's definitely <laughs> moonlight won all those awards because it's absolutely going for their taste <laughs> oh yeah it is you like got it. the academy here you go. And that's why I'm like not super in Oscars because it does kind of feel like, oh, you have to be about a 15 year old discovering themselves and then you'll win. It's like, uh, it's it's just like, I don't know. If it like when you say like, oh, it's Oscar bait, like I feel yeah, like it's you know all that type of movie, that, though, you know, like mm -hmm. I wish there was like some diversity. As a kid, I was like, why, why is it my favorite action movie, whatever I was watching at the time, like I'm nominated for Oscars? And obviously, it makes sense why it isn't, but then we I had Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> Best true. picture nominee. That's, that's, true, so that's true. That's a good point. It's basically, it seems like current vibe is if a movie is successful enough and a big pop cultural moment enough. It subsides the typical Oscar vibe, and that's how you get things like Mad Max. It's how you get things like Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's how you get things like Barbie, which is nominated this year for Best Picture. Yeah, like, and it, should, and it should win. It's such a good movie. Look, I'm about to watch. Uh, I got a watch party I'm doing with some friends in a little bit. We're going to okay. watch Poor Things, and we're going to watch American Fiction. Okay. I really hope American Fiction blows me out of the water, and I hope Poor, Poor Things is good, too. I feel weird if Barbie wins. I feel very strange if Barbie wins. That feels so capitalistic of a choice to make <laughs> it's like what are we going to nominate uh what about these cool original stories about intrigue and people how about the movie about toys <laughs> it's like great movie great feminist commentary blah blah oh, okay. blah i saw so barbie you know. twice in theaters oh, okay, okay. Like, so you know you know, you know. yeah it's i understand toys, it's about I I don't know, that's way crazy. more than just about toys but it only okay. got made because it's about toys that's true <laughs> that's true it was originally going to be probably a horrible movie too and the only reason it's good is because of the uh, director and then Martin she got yeah. Margo to agree and that's the only reason it was mm -hmm. good yeah like, it was Greta gonna Girl be it's great it was gonna be it was probably gonna be some terrible forgettable thing and then it got like redone three times or something like that and then it finally mm -hmm. got this director and then it got it, it was uh, yeah Greta Gerwig uh, and Noah Baumbach yeah. yeah 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 and it made it good and, and they mm -hmm. got Margo to do it so yeah and Greta's won multiple Oscars, so you know, yeah. win or lose, she's going home paid. She's, she's fine. She doesn't give two shits. She's looking at her bank account every time. Mm. <laughs> good. <laughs> Absolutely. Damn it. But hey. Could yeah. you believe this is a video game show? I mean, I mean, at this point, <laughs> I can't. I can't fathom. We're gonna go on and talk about deep, deep PlayStation financials in a little bit. But right now, we're doing not so rapid fire. Woo wee. I gotta start it off sadly. So maybe bring down the woo. Oh, boo wee. There we go. Sad news to start the show as Yoshi <clears throat> sorry. Yoshitaka Miriyama, creator of Suikoden and the Union Chronicles director, has passed away. I did want to take a second. I don't know if you have any relationship with this man and what his work is, but Suikoden specifically five was so such a big point in how I view video games. Uh, it was, if I have, there's pretty much three games I contribute to bringing me here, talking about them, being so interested in them. And that is one of them. So and five is um, something I deeply, deeply love. It's my favorite of the series, although I know that's controversial with Suikoden and two specifically, but I love Suikoden and five. I will miss this man. Mm -hmm. I, hopefully, he was able to, and not hopefully, I'm sure he finished his work with the Uden Chronicles. We'll be able to see everything come from there for his, his last little hoorah. But everyone, take take a moment today. Think about Suikoden. And if you haven't tried it, it's a beautiful JRPG series. One, two, five, I think, is masterpieces. And that's all I wanted to say. Do you have anything to comment on this? Hmm. Everyone's been talking about Suikoden for years. I got to give it a shot. And, you know, hopefully this motivates people like me to finally give it a shot as well yeah uh, yeah r.i.p great creator great legacy you're leaving behind konami is re-releasing sweden one and two soon so maybe that'll get people revitalizing the series again because it's 
growing up, entering the kind of video game space, you would say, you know, reading tweets and all these things. Not many people talk about Suikoden, I feel like. We bring up Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest. Um, we go even back and talk about the originators of Dragon, you know, it was original Dragon Warriors. We talk about the, the complexities of Final Fantasy and these things, and we never really bring up Suikoden. I feel like it's always overlooked specifically. And hopefully the one and two kind of reminds people, hey, these were great games. These 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 are still unique. Not many people really do what, what they do especially that well but yeah absolutely thank you for taking some time with me mm -hmm. this is random news of the elden ring trademark has moved from bandai napco to FromSoft. you imagine this was uh this was actually last year you imagine this was something in their contract to where they could possibly buy them out of it or something uh because i'm sure bandai namco did not want to get rid of that but they had to for whatever mm -hmm. reason i'm sure but uh, good for from software because they don't have too much else uh they don't have um i don't believe they own Sekiro. i still think activision owns that i believe uh, so too and they bloodborne still have dark that's souls. sony bloodborne they don't have that yeah yeah so that's do they own dark souls yeah i feel like that's being guy it oh that's a good point because they, they publish not. all the dark souls games and then they no, just they stopped making them after three no they did no you're right they probably don't they probably hmm. don't Actually, they probably own sense. Demon Souls and Demon Souls and, you know, Ooh, Kingsfield and everything from true. earlier is all them. But then up to now, all their big souls like Renaissance, they probably only own now Elden Ring. They probably. Yeah, that's a good. That's such a great point. Thank you for bringing this up. Yeah, they might only at this point own that. I don't know if they own Dark. I don't think they do, actually. And mm. to, to bring up Demon Souls, if that was the, the Sony at the time that we that I would think of, they might have kept that, too. I don't think they they would have. Um, I mean, they yeah. remade it, so you imagine they owned Demon Souls. Hmm. Um, so maybe, maybe they don't even own that. Maybe it's just Elden Ring and their early stuff that no one cares about. Uh, can you? Do they even own Armor Core? You know, there's so many good, good questions. Huh. It's like who knows? Huh. You would imagine well, hey. they own Armor Core. I, I, I think they do. But well, the the thing is, no matter who owns these IPs outside of From Software, those IPs won't be what they are without From Software. So I think yep. they're on the hook for you know yeah. sequels if they care to make them, but. There's no way they're going to get, hey, Team Ninja, want to make Bloodborne 2? Yeah, That's Bloodborne not going to hit the same. They're, they're going to be like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> God, no. That sounds like we a... We have IPs, for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a firebomb waiting to happen. Absolutely. Uh, that also... Um, that makes me think about um, when... Oh, my God. It just dropped from my mind just that quickly. Uh-oh. Hmm. It'll come back this to makes you. Okay. We'll come back around. Remedy. Has sold Alan Wake 2. Has sold specifically 1.3 million copies since the launch. Woo! So good. So uh, nice yeah. for them. Um, I honestly thought it would so sell soft. This is kind of soft, but they make their games cheaply by I don't know how. I assume uh, it is just cheap work compared to keeping something here, but crazy, crazy, crazy. If I remember right, they said this cost like $80 million or something like that. I don't know how. No one hmm. doing over there. No wizardry or anything like that, but. That means they are pretty close to breaking even, and uh, their games have long tails. I believe Control mm -hmm. kept selling for months afterwards. Yes, so yes. This is... this is way earlier. It sold. It yeah. hit a million way later than this game is, so it's going to yeah. be okay. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm sure it will keep going through sales and all these things, and they'll be just fine. They did expound in their financials. They will be uh, jumping forward with more Control and Alan Wake. So. Get ready mm. for that. I'm very excited. Can't wait for the next control. Yeah, me. Oh, next control. That's the real money for me. And then when this eventually, either I'll buy it on sale or Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, one of the two. Um, I can't wait to play Alan Wake Two once I get around to it. Yeah, I, I, I can't stop thinking about Control Two because if they really nail the narrative, I feel like it won't be as looked over as it did when it came out. Because then they nailed it with Alan Wake Two. So if they keep that energy for Control Two, Control Two, it was great. But it kind of peters out at the end, and especially if you know the ending. It is like mm -hmm. laughably pretty bad. Um, so if they, if they can get it from point A to B and really get you into it, intergrain some of that deep lore they have in the game. I don't know if you've read any of the lore and control, but it is crazy deep. Some of it. Some of the talking little about, side off stories. Yeah. Talking about yeah. like even little something like a pencil has lore in these things. Like, yeah. Just because of the nature of how interesting the... Um, uh, the control unit is so hopefully yeah. they keep it up 
Oh, that one funny. balloon that just kept leaking forever. Ah, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. The fridge. Good God. I remember the fridge. It's like you can't mm-hmm. don't blink. Yeah, stare at the fridge. And the guy was yeah. like sitting there, like I, I, I've been here for hours. Someone come get me. <laughs> you want to talk about fridge. a Netflix series bait? Oh my God, oh, that's it wow. right there. That's a great point. That, you could say that too about I guess Alan Wake too, because they 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 almost feel like you're playing this weird middle ground, and they finally mm. nailed it. This is what they wanted, I imagine, when they did Quantum Break. Where like we want to fuse these two things together, but we don't really know how yet. So we'll you'll play the game and then watch a show and then play and then watch. So now it's like no, no, it's ingrained in the narrative. It's not weird when you're wa- mm. you're watching a screen and then it flips and you're you're watching him on a news talk show. It's not you know it's not weird. I I, I love that. Nice. I love that. It used to be such a turnoff. I don't know if this is true about you, but if there was ever real people in the game immediate turn off for me i don't know why it was an immediate turn off for me not because of the aspect itself but because that used to only happen in like adventure games like point and click tile games now if it popped up in like a action game or a racing game or anything more like that it's something that intrigues me more than pushes me off because i know the gameplay i'm already there for yeah it's definitely been uh it's definitely left me because, of course, immortality and and yeah. it's used wiser now. I I, I remember a famous mm-hmm. example being Need for Speed the remake. I think it was in twenty yeah. when this came out. That one I was bad, to, actually. I went to play it, and I when I tell you I was playing it, and then when it gets to the first FMB where they're pretending to talk to you, I went nope, closed the game, never played it ever again. <laughs> so I have like an, I have like thirty minutes of Need for Speed on my Xbox, for, well. and now everyone knows why. Luckily for you, Unbound is on PlayStation Plus soon. Now you can watch Cartoon ASAP Rocky talk to you instead. <laughs> God bless him. More sales news. Spider-Man 2 has sold 10 million copies since launch. Not surprising. This is a behemoth of a game at this point. Of course, it has Spider-Man at the name. Um, and also, it has to sell <laughs> this many mm-hmm. copies. For, uh, we know now for the Insomniac leak. Uh, I'm happy for them. Insomniac deserves everything they get. Um, unfortunately, they were not bought for more. I wish everyone else got way more money, but that's the, it's the war we live in. I'm glad that they're making the money now, though, at least. And uh, do the Insomniac leaks. Unfortunately, they're not going to be doing anything original for a while, but I'm looking forward to the games that they're doing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to those games as well, but I think this is just a wider shift. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about it later in the show, but are we talking about Respawn's rumored game? We are. At all? Okay, okay. We'll get around to that. But, you know, in general, I'm just a little sad that a lot of these big AAA studios are have are going to be like, hey, this really nice IP that we made originally and everyone liked the first couple iterations of it, uh, we can't do that anymore because games are too expensive. So now everything has yeah. to be a part of the massive IP that exists in a different medium. So yeah, this is just another one of those, but Spider-Man 2 is pretty fun, so I can't really complain too much, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I re- I'm reminded of the and it's so great. Actually, you know what? I have so many avenues I want to tackle now that you bring that up. Uh, I want to quickly, you say Spider-Man 2 was fun. I agree, though. But it does almost feel like the money is like dictating the story a bit. Because yes. it, because it, my main criticism was Spider-Man 2 was so safe. And when you see numbers and what they have to make, it's like, well, I mean, they probably had to be. do what they want to do. Like, like I, I have you have mm-hmm. to imagine, like, I, and it probably doesn't work this way, but they're probably heavily incentivized to keep it going versus, hey, let's do something crazy like killing the main character, Peter Parker, or killing Miles. Uh, I'm not spoiling anything, but like, yeah, obviously I said it's safe, but <laughs> they can't really get crazy with it. But maybe they don't care. I don't, I don't know what's going on over there. Uh, you imagine they're not being forced to anything, uh, but they're being heavily um motivated monetarily to keep things going absolutely which makes me think hopefully spider-man 3 is their last one of these for like several years at least 10 years uh and if that is the case do something darren make it a final give us some sense of finality maybe that's the justification we need i can i i hope i had a vision for this game um maybe it'll be the next one but i really Mm. I really want them to like let it go, like just really yeah. go into it. But who knows what they have to do over there? They already introduced another fucking 
thing in this. I won't spoil, I guess, but and it's like, is that going to be a justification to keep things going? I don't like that very much. Yeah, but. I don't know if I remember what you're talking about. Maybe that's something. In, is that side content or is that the main game? No, very end of the game. It's a post credit scene. Oh, that. Uh, OK. Kinda, yeah, that might be a way. Kind of indicates like. You plan on doing more of this or something? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We might talk about that offline, but yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see about it. Seemingly, to quell rumors of Dragon Dogma 2 being a locked 30 frames per second, the director of the game, Daki Itsunu, tweeted out that it will feature uncapped frame rates and support for VRR. Not much to say mm -hmm. here. There were rumors going around. It's like, it's 30 frames, it's 30 frames. It's uncapped. That doesn't mean it's locked to anything, of course. That means it can fluctuate however much it needs which could lead to a choppy experience. This is something we will literally only know until we play the game. So I don't have anything to add. I can't wait for Dragon's Wong 2. Even if it's 30 frames, I'd probably still play it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it. I'm trying to look up gameplay of it right now because I, I feel like I've it's only seen gameplay of this thing at 60 frames a second. Yeah, I think so. I, I think every time they've showed it, it was at 60 frames, obviously on a PC, maxed out, looking great. Indeed, indeed. And yeah, I, I'm trying to look at it now. I, the gameplay that I looked at was absolutely 30 frames, but I'm sure this game is gonna be. Oh no, it's 60 on it's it's 60 on this PS5 clip. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be a fun game, even if it's at 30. I think it's still gonna be worth it. But I played Gotham. This is be fun. Exactly, and this is the RE engine for Christ's sake. This thing does yeah. wonders. It can run at whatever frame rate it damn well pleases. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and as far as I understand, the way they're describing the game. Although there's, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of enemies on the screen. It's just like one big one. So hopefully that helps run the game with some wizardry or something. Well, I don't know. There, you're not. It's not uh, Dynasty Warriors, but you know, there's yeah. probably a couple enemies on screen every now and then. Like no more than ten, I'd assume. But you know, I got the utmost faith in this game. I think it's gonna be a, a, a gosh darn blast. <laughs> I think it'll be just fine. The twenty second will be of March will be insane. I'm nervous. <laughs> Uh, this is an obligatory part of the show where I make fun of Embracer. Um, they have done so much wrong, and again, uh, they've canceled a bunch of games. They are going to say they are literally laying off more people on top of the nearly 1,500 that they've done. Um, sad excuse mm -hmm. for a company. It's clear that they suck. They don't know what they're doing. They were going to... I've said it over and over again. It's, I'm sure it's boring for the regular achievers here, but they bought all these companies knowing that they'd sell off to something. It was going to be Saudis, most likely. It didn't work out. And now they're imploding on themselves. It doesn't take a mathematical genius to figure out that that was a dumbass plan. You were Absolutely. literally banking your life on a coin flip. I don't know what you expected. Um, the Saudis are a lot of things. I wouldn't say they're reliable. So I don't know nah. why you would rely on something like that. Uh, but they're clearly, I mean, this is kind of like a good point of showing like, you know, dumbasses have a lot of money too. And I'll say that wholeheartedly uh, with my whole chest that those people fucked up a lot of people's lives. They gave them money that they probably couldn't say no to. And now a lot of them don't have jobs anymore and they suck. Yep. And you saw the latest thing about them being like, our main concern is providing value to shareholders. Yeah, they're, they're like, praying. They're praying that that they're not going to be asked for more, and they're just gonna be like, "Look, we know we have to keep the number up, so please don't shred us any more than we're. They're done. It's over for them. Like there is no more. There. This is just the beginning of of the end. I assume, or at least I hope, many companies have escape clauses somehow baked in. Uh, Gearbox, I believe, does, and they're probably mm -hmm. working on that right now. You imagine. So hopefully that's yeah. going to happen. Hopefully a lot of these companies can just go make something else and make a new thing somewhere else. I don't know, but this place fucking they they, they suck. My I'll say it again. I thought Ten Cent was going to be a much bigger problem than it was. Clearly, <laughs> the clearly, Chinese market said, "Hey, we're going to regulate this shit." Now they're all fucked. Yeah, now they're now they're <laughs> fucked. They got fucked by their home. Uh, their home. So. <laughs> And Tencent did exactly what I thought Tencent, uh, or sorry, um, Embracer did exactly Embracer. what I thought Tencent would do. They they out Tencented Tencent, which is crazy, and they're just imploding. And it's both fascinating and horrific to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 
it's insane. Um, I'll say I hope. I think a lot of companies are realizing, hey, we're getting to a head of we can't pay a ninety million dollars per game anymore. This isn't feasible anymore. They got rid of a lot of the double A teams that they had on their roster. A lot of these smaller studios they've sold off or just outright shuttered. Embracer was taking them all up to kind of define themselves by that. Now that Embracer's falling apart, hopefully some of these other publishers can be like, you know what? Maybe it's smart to have a studio like Black Forest Games that will give us a pretty reliable every two years we get another uh, Destroy All Humans remake or something like that or a Spongebob, you know, platformer. Those games are solid. They sell pretty far tail, even if they aren't making a million immediately. Like, they're consistent games. I think a lot of the Embracer Studios make very consistent games for not $3 billion. Maybe they will get snatched up by some of these companies who are seeing the ties change. Because, I mean, look at Xbox. They realize, hey, we got a lot of those studios here, your Obsidians, that are good workhorses that make games pretty consistently. They're only on one platform. We need to spread them around. So yeah. people are seeing the writing on the wall and they need more money. Hopefully they will look at studios like these and pick them up because they deserve to have employment. I'm glad Volition landed on their feet as a yep. new company working with yeah. Xbox. So mm-hmm. there's hope out there, hopefully. This is discovered by Gamatsu. Intergalactic the Heretic Prophet was trademarked by Sony. And because of the descriptors, we can guess it will be something in video games. Seems like going to be a title for something. Um, seems like a silly title, but I kind of dig it at the same time. I think the Heretic Prophet would be way cooler than yeah. Intergalactic colon the Heretic Prophet. Um, you imagine this is like a series. Is this Corey Balog's sci-fi thing? Maybe I remember rumors of saying he might be working on like a sci-fi thing over at Santa Monica. Is that happening? Maybe is this something entirely different from someone else? Who knows? But. I don't know. I, I, hmm. I, I, I saw people kind of making fun of the name. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Now, it is a little name with Intergalactic and then, Her- but it would be uh, the Heretic Prophet. Oh, that'd be such a sick name. Oh, my God. Intergalactic, the Heretic Prophet sounds like a adults only game on Steam. Yeah, um, it does kind of doesn't. Yeah, that's a good point. Adult Swim the, Show or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Heretic Prophet just by itself. Yeah, that's Ooh. a new Sony IP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, real yeah. good. That but I think if it, if it is the uh, sci-fi one, you don't the heretic prophet doesn't screen space but intergalactic the heretic prophet yeah that screen space so i think yeah. that might be why it's on there but here's hoping that you know they can figure that name out before it really goes through i mean it's already <laughs> trademarked so i guess we're fucked already but yeah they trademarked it. i mean you know they you could trademark a bunch of things just to be safe but True. yeah they have trademarked it this could be fine or this could you know this could just be a maybe we don't know mm-hmm. you know yeah. sony has a bunch time of time will tell trademarks. time I, will I tell on that one <laughs> this is the part of the show where I ask a single question to my co-host today, and that's of course Emmett. Hmm. What have you been playing? I have been on a pretty big Souls Light kick. Um, the only exception I'll say, hop back into Apex Legends lately because it's this fifth anniversary. Uh, they did a lot of changes to the game. Uh, I still enjoy that game quite a bit. Runs great on Steam Deck as well. That's where I've been playing it. Um, But now they've basically put more MOBA elements where as you get kills and whatnot, you can't pick up shields off the floor anymore. Oh, You can't get a different tier shield. It's literally you have to kill people and get XP to get kills or play your class's role. So heal or scan whatever your class does. Um, So that's the main way to like get better shields now. But then they have little XP caches around the map that kind of boost you up and give you more, you know, XP towards the next shield rank. And then also they have abilities. So once you rank up in game, now you can choose, all right, if I'm lifeline, I can get a faster, uh, the the robot heals me faster or it can revive people faster. And then when you get to the top is tier, it's like you can get a free self revive or your supply drop for one instance is like super incredible. So, you know, there, there's a lot of elements in that. Every single character has new upgrades that you can get throughout the match. So it just makes it a little bit more d- dynamic. It's just more fun to go from match to match and like see, oh, how is it going to play out this time? Um, so I'm playing that, been itching to get back into that. But I've been on a Souls like kick mainly. Um, Stranger Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, been deep into that on Steam Deck through PlayStation Plus, PlayStation 5 streaming. Um, that game's still very fun, but I have hit a boss. There's a dragon boss that only takes massive damage to, like, 
the necks of the dragon. It's like a bunch of like eight dragon heads out of its back or something. Um, and what is this game? That, uh, this Stranger Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Yeah, they they right. really good I, bosses. Uh, no, that sounds sick. I I, I that's yeah. what I was like that. I was like I, th- he didn't say Stranger Paradise. What is this? That sounds <laughs> kind of sick. Yeah, they they have like the boss fights are probably my favorite elements of the game because it's very difficult and it's very like oh I finally got over on them. But goddamn, it's Stranger Paradise is difficult because there's a lot of different ways to do damage and there's a lot of cool ways to do damage from a distance and whatnot. But I haven't figured out a consistent way to mitigate damage. There's mm. not a there's not a very obvious parry mechanic. Only certain like certain spells you can like parry with like by catching them and absorbing it but physical attacks fuck? you gotta sh- put the shield up or yeah. you gotta dodge out the way it's not you know there are parries in the game but it's a little bit harder to figure out it's not as obvious of a system which is why i finally got remote play working on steam deck there's a real quick psa for everybody out there go on steam i think it's xb play uh, uh app on steam i'm actually gonna look that up before i butcher it um it is a very good app if you want. There's a bunch of ways to get placed or uh, Xbox Game Pass streaming on Steam Deck for free. You don't have to, you know, do too much work to get it working through the browser. And then of course there are apps where you can do remote play uh on Steam Deck for free. But this XB Play app on Steam is pretty much perfect. All you do is log in and everything's figured out. Um I've been using that app. It's seven dollars. So okay. It it does cost money, but I promise you, if you don't want to do any work, it, it works perfect. And I've been knee deep in that app using it uh, to play Wulong Fallen Dynasty mm. on my Xbox remote okay. play. Okay. And well, that game is pretty this. much it's pretty much what I want from Stranger Paradise, but more. But good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say but good, but like <laughs> it's a I very would. obvious. Every time I die in Wulong Fallen Dynasty, I know exactly yeah. what I did wrong. Yeah. It's always, oh, I should have deflected here. I should have backed off here. I know exactly what I did. When Stranger of Paradise, sometimes it's so overwhelming that I'm like, I thought I blocked or I thought I got enough out the way. But no, this one, very obvious, very fun. I've beaten like two bosses in the last couple of days just running through the game. It is just so satisfying. Team Ninja has always made really satisfying melee action games, but this one feels like it's on another level. Um, and you're talking to someone who played most of ninja gaiden one remake or remaster uh like a year or two ago so it's okay. kind of fresh in my head yeah. um but yeah those games are great uh and then uh other than wulong which i think wulong is gonna be my main one right now stray blade i think is what it's called uh it's an indie souls like it was part okay. of the um humble bundle had a souls like bundle uh, a couple days ago that just went off uh it had a lot of games on there it had stuff like uh i think grime was on there stray lights which is the color coded kind of souls like yeah. um a lot of good ones on there clash the xeno clash uh kind of reboot um a lot of good games on there but stray blade is one i had my eye on uh very nice animations very cool art style kind of pretty high production budget it feels like but it feels a little cheap in the in the ui department uh it runs on Steam Deck, but not very well. Whenever you open up the menu to equip armor on your character, it h- hits like 10 frames a second. But when you're in game, it holds around 30 to 40. Um, but even then, it's still very choppy. There's a lot of pop in. I'm waiting for Steam. Hopefully, they're going to look at that game, give it some type of official verified status, do some updates, patches to Proton, whatever. But that game's pretty solid when it runs right which is why I haven't been playing it as much because it doesn't run right all the time. And there's no cloud save. So when I booted it up on PC, I was starting at one and I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. But yeah, it's a good game otherwise. Uh, And those are the games I've been playing. Those four I've been bouncing back and forth between. What you expect from an Emmett, what have you been playing? I love it. I love it. Every time (laughs) you come, you bring something new. It's my favorite thing about you, I think. Um, Other than your fat, no, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> personality, yeah, you're yeah. Right. <laughs> great personality, just the fattest. Um, I have to think. So I have finished my Final Fantasy VII journey. I guess I'll say I played it for the first time. I beat that last week. I uh, played through the original FF7, then went to remake, played through remake on hard, got the platinum done. Wow. Then I played the DLC and I've done all that 
since I've talked last. And I gotta say, it's I forgot how good a remake was. I gotta be I gotta be honest with everyone here. I gotta I don't think I really gave the game the credit it really deserved when it came out. And I don't think I've done it since then. And I have to say, it's great. The combat is so so good. It's delight to play. I love how they've kind of married active combat and turn-based perfectly in this very natural way. It feels obvious, but it, it's it's unique, and I really hope... I mean, Square Enix makes Kingdom Hearts. I just hope they just completely rip rip this off for the Kingdom Hearts 4. Um, they probably won't, but I love. I just love how this works. I love the ATB system. I love getting creative. I love the materia, and it's, it's as deep as you want it to be. Uh, anyone can be anything. That's my favorite part of many games where it's like, you want Cloud to be a mage? You can. Just put on this sword, put on this materia, make some magic ups, boom, boom, boom. Um, I, I just, I, I had a great time. I'm happy that I finally understand the story of Final Fantasy VII. I've tried multiple, multiple, and I mean multiple times to play Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> the visuals are the main deterrent. I have to be honest with that. Um, mm -hmm. Not many games do that. I mean, I still play NES game. I, you know, it's not... It's just that specific time frame of video games, the kind of PS1 GameCube-ish era where like we're still trying to figure out 3D models and how they look good. And it, mm. and it just they look like shapes talking to me. Now, I eventually got over that. Um, I actually think Barrett looks very good in that game, but Cloud just looks so silly. Like his eyes <laughs> look so silly on his base model. The cutscenes look gorgeous, especially when you bring in how, the timing the game launched and really how beautiful it is and it is crazy how fat i mean if you really look at the time between final fantasy 7 and final fantasy 10 like that time gap is so crazy about how different those games look and how beautiful and how fast we really did figure out how to make this 3d environment like look great and compelling Indeed. um it looks Indeed. like you were gonna say something Oh, I was going to say, uh, I feel like that's just the, the the PlayStation 1 is such a hard graphical console generation to take because mm. we were close enough to suggest at a higher fidelity at like, you know, movie style storytelling. We were close enough to have voice acting. We were close yeah. enough to have these pre-rendered videos play reliably. Yeah. But we weren't there yet when it came to gameplay. And I think that's why it's so hard where, you know, everything before then, you didn't even ask for those types of qualifications because we weren't there at all. It was all impressionist. You couldn't even hint at stuff. PlayStation 1, you could finally hint. And it wasn't until like PlayStation 2 where you could yeah roughly approximate yeah, <laughs> but we had right. to go through one in order to get to two yeah and, and i get it and i do respect it too and final fantasy 7 i'm not i don't i don't want to sleep on it where it is important i mean it, it is incredibly important with the way it handles its narrative the way it tells you the narrative the way it's expansive i mean it came on three disc which is obviously famous now but it it is really i, I remember that being a th i don't remember that i remember reading and hearing about people's experience but that was a big deal like feeling mm -hmm. like you're having this saga in a game and it's not like multiple games i know i remember my dad telling me um it felt like you were getting like a trilogy like when you opened yeah. it it felt like you were getting like this entire kind of thing instead of just one game it kind of felt like you were playing multiple things at once so i i, yeah, I get it i respect it it's just it took me so long to really get put push back I, and I, I will say this the game is phenomenal. I want to be clear. I'm just saying specifically the beginning of the game, I think is a little rough. I love JRPGs. I love these types of games. So if I have trouble getting into it, I have to imagine many people do. And and that first, I would say four to six hours, it can be a little rough a li a, trying to really get into it. Um, yeah. The bombing and, and, you know, being eco-terrorist and stuff is intriguing. But after that, it kind of, you know, it's a little slow to like keep going. Um, they introduce you to a lot of characters at once, and obviously I have a background of all of them, but I imagine at the time it, you know, it might have been a little rough, but I I loved this game. It was it was awesome. And I have to admit, I cheated completely all over the place. Oh yeah. The remaster yeah, gives you like limits and stuff. I didn't want to grind. This was the, I beat this in 30 hours. Completely abusing the game. Completely time times three to move around the world map. Like, you know, when you get the world map in games, Walking you're around, so yeah. you're so slow. I do feel like it does feel like the game was made specifically to like kind of inflate playtime with how slow. I mean, you go so 
so slow. It's like fascinating how slow you go. It's like, how did you? Mm -hmm. I know you. They want you to feel like you're going places and things, but God, you move so slow. I, I mean, I, that, I'm, I'm yeah. sure that was it, with tech and stuff too. But like, God damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's made for a generation where you bought one game and that's all you had. Yeah. For until next year in some cases, so you had to get as much life as you could out of that game. And I think they were making games back then for knowing that was the case for a lot of people. Or now it's like, if we're going to do that, we're going to make a repeatable loop rather yeah. than drawing it out for you to beat a game at all. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was great. Loved it. Went from that immediately to the remake. I've already sp spoke on that. Loved it. Love that. I know what's going on now. Um, I mm -hmm. do wish they were clear with that. I had, a, I still have a critique on that. Where I get remake is a play on words, but I wish you would have told like, hey, play Final Fantasy VII. Like, you know, like I, I would have done it back then. Mm. I didn't think I needed to. I was like, no, no. So I got to play Final Fantasy VII for Christ's sake. That's what you're telling me right now. <laughs> to appreciate it, probably. But you've you've probably already seen a. A fucking. Video essay about it, so if you know the if you know the game, I feel like if you know the game enough, you don't need to play it because i don't know if i know the game enough to be oh, completely then, honest with you oh, okay yeah i don't know if you i mean so much of this game is in our culture we i mean everyone knows the biggest twist in the game right i mean i know a character twist. death that happens towards yeah. the end of where remake was supposed to end but i don't know yeah, I see what people have been saying basically i understand what remake is in in relation to the original i understand yeah. it is not a one-to-one -one, they're telling the story again but I understand that the fact that that is not the case is also canonical to the game. <laughs> so I just don't know how exactly that makes sense in the lore. Yeah, I don't know either having played them because I don't understand how it would make sense. There is a kid. Oh, can, I, can I say this? I think I can because it's not like you're necessarily a spoiler. Um, the Final Fantasy remake Aerith, and it's clear on a second playthrough to me, seems mm -hmm. to know things. That she shouldn't. Mm. So maybe we're hint and this is literally in the first cutscene of remake. So I don't want to hear it. Okay. Like literally okay. that fir the first cutscene. So I'm not spoiling anything here, but the first cutscene already kind of hints she knows something. And if you keep going, yeah, it just keeps expounding on like she can't. It seems like she knows something. What's going on mm -hmm. here? I and I'm glad I have that. I had that epiphany before someone telling me. Because it is it, like if you look for it, it's kind of obvious now. But like at the time, I didn't think about it. I thought it was kind of a coincidence versus like, no, they're telling you she probably knows something. Now, I'm interested on in how and why. And clearly, we're trying mm -hmm. to stop Final Fantasy seven from happening. Certain ah, OK, when you say so, it like that, I that doesn't clear anything else up, but it makes me even yeah. more interested to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Copy. I, I think that's what's huh. going to happen. That seems like what's happening it seems like we don't want that to happen because i won't spoil it but at the end of remake you know it's clear that's kind of clear mm. but i don't know i love Time it i can't wait tell. i played the dlc i'll quickly speak on that um uh there's a mini game called fort condor in this oh my god I got so addicted to it. I wish there was more. Hopefully it's going to be more in Rebirth. I loved it. Uh, Fort Condor is a place in Final Fantasy VII. And instead of... Uh, I, I'm assuming this won't be a place anymore. And it's just going to be the board game. So instead of um, going there and kind of doing like a tower defense, like a very early version of like of a tower defense in the original game, this mm. is like a board game. You have like... It's very simple. There's two lanes. You, you summon your people. It's almost like a uh not smite but almost like a moba kind of where you're summoning Ooh. these guys and they're calling do lanes and you're trying to like uh destroy their outposts and this counters this very fire emblem in terms of strategy where it's a triangle sword beats shield shield beats uh arrow etc um hmm. loved it nice. i love that was my favorite part of dlc be, be honest yuffie's an interesting character i liked it um i didn't i actually didn't love the dlc narratively of course combat all these things great Loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the side quest that can go on. But narratively, it kind of feels like they wanted to make a DLC and this is how they justified it, justified a re-release sort of kind of thing because it doesn't feel like anything was told that we needed to know unless mm. I'm missing something. And there was an introduction of a character that I don't think is in the original. So 
Maybe that's hmm. that's going to be important for later or something. I don't know, but I remember beating it and being like, eh. "Just kind of end. Just kind of ends. Just two mm-hmm. two chapters. We have a clear goal. The goal is is figured out, and then it ends. Kind of. So I don't know. It was it was mm. weird. It, okay. Still it's worth the play though. I don't regret playing it by any means. Nice. Time will tell. Uh, one more to finish out. Uh, I've played two more games, hmm. and I'm bouncing in between. I rarely do this, but they kind of complement each other almost. Um, not literally, but kind of figuratively sense. Um, I'll start with Persona 3 Reload. I've played, of course, Persona 4 Gold and Persona 5 Royal and Persona 5 OG. Uh, I am going through Persona 3 Reload right now. Not much to say if you're a Persona fan. You're going to like this one. If you're not, don't think you'd like this one. Uh, I love the updates. I don't know the original game, so I can't speak on what they've done. But what I've read is they've made Tartarus a little better, even though that's clearly the worst part of the game. Uh, Tartarus is this kind of... uh, It's kind of like a... It's not infinite, because it has a finite amount of, of floors, but you're constantly going up this this mm-hmm. otherworldly place and there's only so many floors you can do in a, in a specific time window and you want to get to the top floor i imagine the game will con- coincide with going up eventually getting to the top wherever that is um, i love the premise of the game the first two to three hours i think is actually probably the best two to three hours of any other game like four and five um mm. i i don't think i'll like this anywhere close to four and five but to speak specifically the premise is so cool um figuring out what sees is figuring out what is happening the reason it's happening all these things cannot wait to figure out more it has such a strong opening and then it's then the persona game starts and you know it kind of is like it's persona yeah it's persona like i'm going to school i'm going to do this thing doing this job playing a game to get more courage you know so it's still it, it 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 was so intriguing, and then you know the Persona game starts, and I'm like, okay, so you you're on this bread. I'm on the breadcrumb trail, and apparently this is seventy ish hours, so I'm twenty four in. So okay. I got a ways to go still, but almost halfway. And nice, to nice. round off, uh, when I'm usually playing at night, Hell Divers Two. Ah, oh, people loving that. Ooh, Ooh this game. PlayStation, we're going to be talking about you in a little bit. What are you doing sleeping on this game? Why was this not everywhere? Why was this not? Because this was commercialized, but but not backed in the way Sony backs their normal games. I'll, I'll contest anyone that they I don't think they were confident in this game. Frankly, at all. I don't yep. know why. I don't know what they saw. I don't know if they just didn't have time with maybe jim ryan leaving or something or maybe being ousted i don't i don't know um but it just seems like no one paid attention this game i don't know what's going on with that uh this game was awesome it's clearly huge the developers clearly did not know it was gonna be huge either which is interesting because they would have had pre-order numbers so that probably means word of mouth sold the game more than uh sony did so you can you can almost say that the game sold it and Sony didn't. Uh, <laughs> the game is great. I actually respect them for going the third person route. Uh, seemingly, it almost wasn't Hell Divers upon first viewing. It is Hell Divers though. You still have your stratagems. You're still picking like what gun you want. You're out, you know. And they've done it so well. You have your own ship. You can name it. Uh, you know, you can still outfit your guy. There's armor, but it's not that important. It has things in the game, but like at the end of the day, it's like, what do you like? Put it on. Yeah. You don't have to get too serious unless you're going to like the hard difficulties. The now, high, yeah, yeah, there's there's so many difficulties, there's like nine of them. There's like, oh, n- shit. like there's like easy, 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 normal, like challenging, hard, very hard. Hmm. And it just keeps going until like nine is like suicide mission or something like that. I will say. I oh, damn. Um, hopefully Sony's on top of them now because they need, they need support to fix the game because the game's kind of falling apart with how many people are playing it. Uh, quick play is completely broken for me, so I can't join matches. Um, for some reason, when I play with my friend Alex, 
no one joins our matches, which I don't mind. It's just weird that that doesn't happen. But if I play by myself, people join. So I don't know what's the difference. Mm. We have the same settings. There's there's nothing on our part that's that's you on Steam or you on uh, uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. OK, yeah. yeah. Then I couldn't tell you what's up. Yeah. Yeah. So if I play solo, I immediately get people like the second I hit a mission. Boom. Someone's joined. Two more people join. And then we go. When I play with hmm. Alex, it's just us. No one ever joins. We've never had someone join in our multiple play sessions. Don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but they got to fix this. I don't know what's happening. Hopefully, they're getting support. I know that uh, the um, direct, I believe it was the director of the game or the head of the studio. I can't remember. I should have yeah. cited the story now. But they were saying, like, <laughs> plants have completely changed for this game. Uh because they didn't know it'd be this popular. They were like, no, the, the we had a roadmap completely out of date now. They're hiring more people. Hopefully Sony's sending some engineers to help them out or something. Um, Absolutely. Or doing something because this game needs the help and they need to like do it now before the problems keep happening and the steam is gone and in a month no one cares about the game. So hopefully they're fixing that. There was a patch today. Haven't played it today, so I don't know. There is a bonus XP weekend to try and like make amends so this mm-hmm. weekend there's like 50 percent extra xp and uh they're called Something. requisitions um you can catch up for the time you lost for yeah and i think i think that's the yeah. reason um hopefully the patch fixes a lot of problems but uh i gotta say it's very good i don't know how were you ever interested in any uh in the hell divers because it seems like an emic game with the it's it's pretty good and it's only five bucks i've been cynical on hell divers mainly because it is the first in the PlayStation live service model push that they're doing. So just on the face of it, I was like, I don't want to support that movement. So I just don't really care about this game too much. And even looking at it, it didn't seem like the best thing since sliced bread. Um, But I enjoyed the first Helldivers a little bit for the few hours I played of it way back on like Vita. Um, So I knew it would have been a good game. The, The explosion it's having is absolutely a surprise. And the thing, two things got me interested to finally try it out one day. Number one, people are comparing it very heavily to Deep Rock Galactic. And for people who don't know, ooh, I love Deep Rock Galactic so fucking oh, much. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll be on this. Yeah. So I might try it for that. And then also, um, it runs really well on Steam Deck. It just got updated Does it as playable. Really? Like, apparently, it's like 30 to 40 frames. Wow. So, okay. and that's wow. before they patched that. it. That's before they gave it an official playable ranking. You might yeah. be able to get it to sixty if you turn some stuff down. But the video I saw was medium settings, getting forty frames, no problem. So, wow, that's incredibly impressive. This game is very. I didn't say this. This game is very pretty. I don't know. They had a lot. I, I mean, they had nine years for the game, um, mm. which is obvious that they probably had a near complete game and then completely restarted, which I'm sure fucking sucked. But that probably gave them time to really, really iron some stuff out. Animations look great. The yeah. physics systems were good. There's a lot of things that work great that clearly was well touched on through that nine hour time frame. And it is very pretty. It is prettier on PC, I imagine. I see clips online and I'm like, God, that looks insane. So I imagine that's like PC 50 billion cards and stuff but mm-hmm. it still looks great on my ps5 yeah yeah i'm sure it's gonna be once i give it a try i'm sure it's gonna be great i could buy it on ps5 just play it on steam deck but the idea of natively it's running perfectly yeah when that yeah, might get on that might push me over there especially because you know steam keys are going to be cheaper than playstation codes any day and, so and it has um crossplay. so if you have a buddy mm-hmm. on ps5 mm-hmm. someone named elijah by chance uh mm-hmm. you can play with them <laughs> I see. I see. We'll see. I, I'm still thinking, but I definitely want to give it a shot. It, it, I it will say fun. anyone on the fence at home, 40 bucks. I, I, I really I think I think they definitely can charge. I mean, I'll be frank. I think they could charge $70 easily for this game. I don't, I don't <laughs> I'm glad they didn't. I'm shocked they didn't uh, jump on the 40 bucks. Give them the signal. Arrowhead, I think, did a great, great job with this. Very happy for them. Uh I'm 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 sure Sony is both happy and mad uh, that it's doing yeah. well because uh, one they're happy one it's great for their service I'm sure but two I imagine they wanted to buy Arrowhead which means it's a little, much more expensive now than it <laughs> was prior. The went up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you assume that was like kind of their studio that made the most sense if they still want MAs so 
they're probably that probably doubled <laughs> that, that price probably doubled whatever it was. i'm hoping they're not even trying to acquire studios anymore at this Me point too. they need to hold on to their money for christ's sake and stop I, I think, buying people to blame off i think they need time for the market to kind of settle and look around to see where the dust settles with both the xbox and where it's going before yes. they make decisions. we see what happened with bungie mm-hmm. and that was their biggest purchase by magnitudes of anything else mm-hmm. i think if you combined every other one it doesn't equal the bungie one yep. which is f- and clearly that's not working that fucks them royally that might be why jim left or was told yeah. to leave. uh cuz i mean that's a lot of money and they might have fu- he might have fucked them I, I don't know and also he was he you know who knows he might there might be he might be serious like i want to retire man like i want to get out of here look uh, he was the most he was like you know that feeling you get at work when it's like the last day before your weekend and you're yeah, waiting for that clock yeah. to tick off you're kind of looking that's at the clock not his, even working yeah absolutely that's been his entire career as ceo <laughs> it does kind of it did is you see oh him? i can't wait to go back to my cats <laughs> did you see he did say that yeah did you see uh there was a um it wasn't a financial call it was late last year so a little bit after he announced it it was a, a business meeting and he was wearing a white t-shirt like just oh a plain God. white T-shirt, just sitting there, like talking with people. I was like, "Oh, he's in fuck it mode." <laughs> like he, mm-hmm. he, that man is like, "I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm retiring. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not wearing a suit anymore." And I'm going. To... I couldn't believe. It. I was like, "Wow, that man, good for him." I mean, regardless of if he being ousted or not, he did relatively well, at least to me. Uh, with the he PS5 was and, he was uh, the leader when they were making a lot of money. Now yes. that some of the choices made during those times are actually going to come around and sh- shake out, he will not be around to suffer any consequences. That is, so here we you are. know what? I, and I love you because you challenged me. That is a good point. You know, we don't actually know if he did good yet, so that that's a good point. <laughs> we do have to kind of wait five years to see what happens. He might have. I mean, this is all speculation, but maybe he got ousted because the games of the server shit isn't going well. If we, if we remember, he said a lot of shit that is not true anymore. The games of the mm-hmm. service thing, X amount of games will be out before X year. That's not happening unless they're going to shove 10 games in the next like three years or whatever it was. Uh, they were going to say like half of their output would be mobile game or so, it was something like that where they would have a huge mobile footprint. There hasn't been a single game since he said that. So nah i maybe maybe, he, maybe they looked at him and was like you said a lot of shit you got us into bungie you, none of this panned out games as a service we just canceled probably 200 million dollars worth of funds maybe 150 maybe less i don't know of naughty dog uh naughty dog's mobile game not mobile game, i'm sorry um uh, games yeah, as a service, game. service yeah uh so maybe they looked at him and was like get get the fuck out we'll be talking about playstation in a second yes indeed whoa rumor around up. So you actually mentioned this earlier, Emmett. Um, hmm. Do you have anything to say about this specifically? Uh, I'll go ahead and give the synopsis, and then you can tell me what you feel about this. So Jeff Grubb, as he often does, has talked many times about this game where it's a, it, there was going to be a Star Wars game made by Respawn. Uh, I think he gave tidbits way, way, uh, like a year or two ago. And now this, there's a full report on Insider Gaming that Respawn is developing a first-person Star Wars Mandalorian game that's in the early stages of development. Now, if you are an early achiever, we were long reporting on this because there were small tidbits slowly coming out. I remember there was a build that who, who knows if it was even from this game, uh, but there was like mm-hmm. a little kind of build that was like released that like showed the Mandalorian and he had like little like little things and he was flying around in this little ship. So... Maybe that's this game. Maybe that was just made up. Who knows? There were little tidbits of like, there's a Mandalorian game somewhere. It might be at EA. So we now have a face and a name to go by. It is going to be a first-person Star Wars Mandalorian game. Early stage of development, ported on by Insider, longly reported by Jeff Grubb. Uh, um, not much else to say. What, what do you got to What do you got to say about this? Um, I have my own thoughts, but I want to hear from you. I'll say first off, as Jeff Grubb uh, also said when talking about this game. Let's keep in mind this is this is a Mandalorian game, but this isn't Mandalorian the show the game. No, so for no, folks yes. who might be that, yeah. expecting 
you know, don't expect Pedro Pascal to pop off. Um, <laughs> they could they could still get him because goddamn, he's in every other nerd property. Um, how, how? But we'll see. Oh my god, he's in. I don't know, dude. What happened? I like he he was. I ain't gonna say he was nobody, but he wasn't what he is now, and now yeah, he is he what was, he is now. And, and now I understand every, what happened. He's gonna he's gonna be Mr. Longman. Like in yeah, Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic. Like, <laughs> what it, what's going on? He's he's Joel, which I, I still think is weird, but I think he did it well enough. But I still think it's weird that he was Joel. Like but it, it's a little weird, but man, that fuck going? I feel like that's like his best one of these nerd roles. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, the one he didn't watch Mandalorian. I agree, I agree. Mandalorian is fine, but him and yeah. Lux is Mm -hmm. insane, I can't wait to see him clean cut in Fantastic Four. I'll say that because I think that's going to be a different change for him, mm -hmm. and I can see it. I wonder if he'll have his little mustache. Ooh, me? I feel like nah. I feel like if you're going to be so Reed either. Richards, you're you're just you're bald as Barabbas. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that is a Caribbean slang that I took from my girlfriend and did not realize till right now. Holy shit! <laughs> um, so yeah, it's not going to necessarily be based on the show, but I do want to read from Tom Henderson just a little bit here Please. to make the point that I'm going to make. Um, starting from the middle here, as first reported by Venture Beats' Jeff Grubb, the game was being led by Restong creative director Mohamed Alavi, who left the studio to pursue his next adventure. According to Grubb, who didn't disclose it was a Star Wars game at the time, but has recently, the game will be focused on mobility and style as guiding principles. The game time mobility has been made possible storytelling-wise thanks to the Man Mandalorian's jetpack, which allows the player to perform horizontal dashing and vertical jumping. Boost sliding, somewhat similar to sliding down hills in Apex Legends. Somewhat and more. similar. <laughs> yeah. Sources describe the game as very fast paced and will reward players who play in this style. For example, the player's health will mainly regenerate based on successive kills. As to be expected, playing as a Mandalorian bounty hunter gives the players a wide variety of weapons and gadgets, including a wrist rocket, a grapple hook, a visor <laughs> for attacking enemies and bounties, and more. Wow, this is um, really on the nose, huh? Yeah, yeah, this is the point I'm going to make. This is what that Apex Legends single player game that we were like, ooh, yeah. maybe that's finally our Titanfall 3. That got canceled. This is probably just the transfer of what that game would have been. Yeah, probably. And they probably you know, got some sort of licensing agreement or they were like, no, nah, let's focus on this. Something mm -hmm. happened and this is the focus now. Absolutely. So, you know, they already said that they were working on a Star Wars game a while back that wasn't Jedi Fallen Order. They said they were working on a first person shooter for Star Wars. Yep. It seems like every chance we've had to get to a Titanfall game has been eaten up by this final result. And on one hand, I am so glad to potentially have the grapple hooking, wall running, floor sliding video game that I've always wanted to play again. I am very excited to return to that. But on the other hand, can't Titanfall be enough? <laughs> yeah. It's 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 what we talked about earlier in the show. It's it can't just be a massive triple A IP that gamers like. It has to be an IP that everyone likes. Yeah. It has to be an IP that is known from your parents, that is known by the four-year-olds. It has to be worldwide in appeal. It can't just be, hey, we made a lot of money from this market. Let's go back to that market. Every everything has to be maximized. It is a product of capitalism that I really hate. <laughs> it's another one of capitalism that I really hate. And it just makes me a little bit sad. But ultimately, I'm playing the fuck out of this game. <laughs> yeah, I um Yeah, you give me a lot to think about. So um hopping off on the it needs to be a IP that's recognized. I I, I tend to agree because and that maybe is a reason and we'll talk about Sony again, I keep saying that, but we'll talk about <laughs> Sony soon, but you look at financials, you look at um, certain aspects, you know, if you're a major executive, you do get a little squirmy when you're like, well, we need, if, if we're going to put in 150 million, uh, we need the, we need the money back plus, right. I'm not in it. No one's in it to break even, you know, you don't want the same amount of money you started with. Right. So mm -hmm. I do understand from that point of view, but we do have to sit down and, and at some point as an industry and talk about, what is happening? Why are we ballooning to such a degree that we we are finding ourselves in these positions that we are not be or we are not able to confidently work on a project without guaranteeing some sort of backing? Like, how many can we name? Spider Man, Blade, Mandalorian. Like these are probably going to be mm -hmm. three hundred million dollar games. 
and they're all these known IP. And I think instead of making something new, the the assurance or safety blanket that a lot of executives will turn to is some of these things. I'm remembering when I was growing up and constantly hearing people who loved movies saying the same thing. Why are we only getting sequels? Why are we only getting book adaptions? Why are we only getting X, Y, Z? Why is there no new thing? Um, I mean, even if you look at the biggest resurgence in movies, it's Marvel. It None of it was new. It was all adapted. Mm-hmm. Almost every storyline was non-original. Uh, it was all based on something. So even the biggest example we have is still something was based on another thing. Um, you the We do have original... IP in our own kind of gaming sphere, but it is few and far between. And it seems like it is also getting worse because Mm -hmm. you're saying we are having so many budget issues. We're having this small pool of money is like, Hey, well, the gaming hasn't expanded in the last 20 years or something like that. Right. It's the same people buying the games. So, and there's, they're struggling to diversify. That's why you see Sony going into India going into Africa and being like, let's make the hero project. Let's try to get more people interested in our IPs and see if we can get PlayStation bigger because we can't grow if there's no growth. Literally, it it, it doesn't matter after a while because at a certain point, um, I think it was um, mm-hmm. Sean Layden who said that where uh, it's been the same like 300 million people who buy games for yep. 20-ish years. And mm-hmm. and we're all getting older. <laughs> yeah. So if that number doesn't grow, we got to figure something else out. And of course, we're talking about video game consoles. We're not talking about mobiles and these things that we're discussing. But I find it worrying that we are getting into a frame where, well, this game's going to cost three hundred fifty million. So who do we go to to figure out something? Like Spider Man being, I think, a famous example. God of War still being a not new IP, but another example, right? If we look at PlayStation, a lot of their success is just a repetition. I think Horizon's a good example of that not happening. I think that's incredibly original, and I'm happy yeah. for that. Uh, and I think um, Gorilla is kind of a shining example of of get someone to make new stuff. Like, I think they're very good at it. I think it's Somniac is too, but looking at their financials, clearly it They're wasn't selling, up. so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever they were working on prior was nothing compared to what we... I, Ratchet and Clank... Um, which Ratchet and Clank was it? I think it was the the movie Rift one. Rift Apart? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 2016. Yeah, I think that was the one where it didn't... It lost the money. Like So you have to look at it and be like, we have to get really selective, and now we lost a studio to marvel whether you like it or not i like it but i understand it, people being sick of that but i don't like it are... as much as the next sunset overdrive the next oh, ratchet stop it the next resistance yeah the next resistance where's that we haven't seen another thing where it's like god there's so many things where it's we're such we're at a precipice of gaming industry where so many so much is happening and i'm waiting for like something to snap or something to happen to alleviate pressure because it does kind of feel like we're at like the middle of a pencil and like there's so much pressure happening and like eventually it's going to snap in half almost like some sort of gaming bubble instead that we haven't seen since really like the 80s or 90s Mm -hmm. you know so much to talk about i think this is a very intriguing topic it's scary when you really kind of sit down and think about it i mean a triple a game is 300 million dollars it's pretty insane you know, yeah. movies fucking or nothing. I mean, that's that's like a that's that's very expensive, and that's to just to compete in a triple mm-hmm. A marketplace. And everyone thinks they can do a Fortnite until they try, and then they figure out they can't. So it's there's no easy way out of this unless you go somewhere where labor is cheap or something. But um, I'll be intrigued because this almost works perfectly into a, a new story. We'll get into a second. Um, anything you want to add before we move on? I think this is a this is a great conversation. I'm loving this. Um, not, not too much. I mean, it, I, at the end of the day, I'm still going to enjoy this game. I'm still going to love this game, but it's not lost on me that, you know, all the, we talked about 2023 was a banner year. It's all twos or threes after it, Mm. or it's all from the franchise that gave you all these movies. Here's a new entry. Yeah. It's, it's not lost on me that that's what games are becoming. And 
you know, a lot of that is driven by profit motives. Uh, and you talk about, hey, what is it going to take for this industry to not go after profit motive so much? And you talk about, you know, a potential crash. That pencil is breaking, mm-hmm. but I want people to question, is it break? Why is it breaking? Why is it breaking? <laughs> I think it's the most important part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it breaking because like- of consumers or is it breaking because... We go a little bit higher executives making very silly things or silly well, motives or et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. It's 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 consumers really picking one or two games. For the broad majority, you got your one or two games you're playing every year no matter what. And yeah. then a couple of like hangout games, your Apexes, your Fortnites. Yep. You can only have so many hangout games. Everyone wants to make their own hangout game and it's not going to work. You can only sell people on, ah, oh, this big new story that everyone has to find out. But for the most part, they're not going to play all of those unless it's like being talked about by everyone in the fucking world. Um, It's really hard to like crack the nut. I think what really needs to happen is we just need a diversity of experiences and easier Mm -hmm. ways to get each of those experiences in front of people's faces, because it's not necessarily the answer is a game pass that has every single game known to man on it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we need to do like, we need to have it where it's like a movie where it's like, I'm in the mood for this right now. Where can I get this that I'm in the mood for? And then you go searching until you find the thing you're in the mood for. I think right now games is, it's not about what you're in the mood for. It's about what's the big thing that's popping. What's top in the steam charts. What has a player base right now? What's in the zeitgeist conversation right now? It's never, what are you in the mood for? Because games are a week long commitment, month long commitment in some cases. Yeah. Movies are one night it satisfies the feeling i had and once we can get that headspace similar i think we'll be in a better spot but it's gonna take a little while you hit so many points there and you can you can point so many ways where you're bringing up good examples and all you have to do is point somewhere right you bring up them like oh you know you play a game our normal consumer right buys call of duty buys two games plays call of duty all year or insert x thing that's that's monetared every year so your maddens you're blind blah blah, blah, blah. we can mm-hmm. keep going um that almost says why game pass does struggle to work because we don't play a lot of games we play one so then yeah. why would you get a service where hey here's a hundred games and it's like why well, I, I can't play a hundred mm-hmm. games in like a month so that's like weird but to, then you have to uh, then there's another way of saying well if you can't do that then how do you get creative with your game pass maybe you don't go to the everyman or maybe you go to the one who is casual and that's what they're doing and they go to like a phone or something where it's like hey just pay this and there'll be a game every time you open your phone and you can play it and mess around or something i don't know but it does mm-hmm. almost say it's that what you said right there is very salient to specifically the game pass conversation can it work will it work and that's that's probably I think that's the most interesting conversation in the industry right now is probably that is yeah. that. And. Again, what we're talking about a little bit, the, the budgets, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I you they, brought up you brought yeah. up. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but you brought up oh, no. uh, sales charts. Uh, if you remember last year, this is a perfect example. Last year, number one guest selling. What was it? Hogwarts Legacy based yeah. on a uh, ip just because not it's an ip yeah that's and the that, only reason that game sold so much and it's and what does executives say when they look at that like that's just an easy thing to look at right you are a big executive somewhere it's like all right we need research research what's selling you come back hey here's a single player game uh the reason it sold though it was it was okay it, the critically it was like around like a kind of b plus uh but it sold because it was a harry potter game and he's like all right, well, base it off something, spend $250 million on something, and then we'll do the same thing with Brady. Which... Die hard. <laughs> wow, we went two different directions. We did, to, we did. To be honest, though, I played the fuck out of a Die Hard game. I've had an idea for one for a very long time. Just making a Metroidvania, that's all. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Metroidvania, go, go, you're in the vents. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you slowly unlock things as you take out the bodyguards. Make it an immersive sim. Get mm-hmm. Arcane on that shit. Oh, fuck Ooh, it. Oh, Arcane. Oh, my God. Whew. Mm-hmm. I, and, I totally have ideas, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, yeah. I love. I have like I showed my wife the other day. Um, I take notes. I don't know if you do this of like story things hmm. because my my mind is just constantly thinking about story stuff, and hmm. I just have a notes app and I write it all down, like kind of like a psycho, you know, like a. And it's just <laughs> a like, little bit like a psycho. It, it's written kind of. Um, it's written like only not only I can read, but like it's not you know. 
you know how you have your own kind of writing style to yourself? Do you do? You do yeah, because you, you know so, it's going to reference so, things that are in your yeah, head, so you can my call head. back to them. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. Oh, that was a great conversation. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> More Switch rumors abound, as it is being reported that Switch 2 may have been delayed out of its 2024 launch window. This could... Or actually, this comes from, I'm sorry, a Brazilian journalist, Pedro Enrique Lutilipe, I believe is how you pronounce that. Or Lipe, I believe. He claims to have multiple sources <laughs> saying the hardware was delayed. Not much else to say on this. Again, this is rumor roundup, meaning this is a rumor. I don't know this gentleman. I did not see him cooperated much, but I do know he is somewhat trusted. As far mm. as I garnered, this was like, I think an hour before I went live, so I didn't have time to really research this. Uh, just wanted mm. to throw it out there. Maybe switch early next year and more sources saying that, of course, the launch games for that system would then be moved to whenever mm. the switch launches. So, um, don't have much to add because you know it's a rumor i can't wait just so we can hear about this so we stop with the switch 2 and we know what it is and <laughs> we can just go off of that uh i'll be curious to see if the march reveal is true um nate the hate i don't know if you saw this last week um yeah. leaked that there will be a direct this week that mm. was delayed because of the podcast from xbox so that will probably yep, be yep. next week now and then next month will be maybe a switch to reveal is i think his exact words Yes. Um, look, I think it makes sense for Switch to come out early in the year. That's what happened with the first Switch. So yep. bingo, bingo on that. Um, for anybody who was thinking it was going to come out early this year, God, no, I Ooh. saw that shit coming. It would not be a announce and release very quickly. That's not how they do things. That's not how you should do things with a console. And, the, and also, that's not how hardware works. You know, yeah, if, it, exactly. if that was true, we would see the system being made already. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I feel like reveal this year in my head, reveal early fall, come out in like March next year. That makes sense in my head. Um, but okay. you know, to hit a holiday season, to have the Switch's last holiday season be hindered by the fact that it's Brigger Brothers coming, maybe they don't want that. So we'll see. I have no idea. That's why you normally start the year with an announcement and then release it at the end. Um all that's great. Uh, I won't care about oh. most of what the Switch 2 does until I can play my PS4 on it, PS5 on it, until I can play my Xbox on it, until I can play a massive legacy library of older games through something like an emu deck. Like, there's so many reasons that the Switch is just not going to hit quite the same when everyone has a Steam Deck. Now, of course, you still got... It's, Nintendo is really the only company that can get away with, you want our games... I don't care what you think about our hardware. We're not putting it anywhere else except this system. They are the yeah. only ones like that, and they're the only ones that I feel we're all okay with that being the case. Or yeah, PlayStation Nintendo Yeah. Is so unique in that way where they truly don't give a fuck. I, and I mean that positively and negatively. They don't give a fuck what you think. They don't care if you think their online sucks. They don't care if if you don't like if you are upset about their droop feed of classic games. They don't care about. I mean, they will make decisions when that like the way they want to. They don't care. They will announce things. It. That's why I feel I find it hard. And I think, and no offense to the people out there, but that's mm-hmm. why I think it's hard for Nintendo shows to be big because they're just so random. And it's hard to like pontificate and figure them out because yeah. it's like, how do you? guess what nintendo's gonna do because they i think they really don't care they do what they want they say what they want they're very kind of rigid the way they conduct business very japanese in the way they actually conduct business and they're becoming this entertainment property that's making movies and theme parks which is kind of wild to say that we live it feels like that doesn't that isn't real but that is they're making movies there's a isn't there a zelda movie coming um, Zelda movie point. from from fucking Sony Pictures. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, and then there's the Mario movie. They have two theme parks. No, sorry, three. They have three mm-hmm. theme parks going yeah, in Florida, LA, and Florida, Japan. LA, and Japan. Like they are expanding into a entertainment property that really you can only say Universal and Disney do. Universal mm-hmm. with, of course, the way they conduct all of their various businesses that they do and Disney being this giant conglomerate. And I don't know if that's what they're trying to do or if this just has happened, this has happened to go this way natively, 
But it's pretty crazy that one, this doesn't happen in America, but it is pretty crazy if you're a Miyamoto and you're sitting there like 40 something years ago, I was making this guy with a hat. And now and now you're <laughs> sitting in front of a theme park for him. Like it's pretty wild. Also very impressive that they've kept these people, and that's just that's just how Jack oh they're doing virtual is. I love they've I love, been their backs to keep those people. So I love yeah. that. Yeah, I love it. I wish it's something we could adapt here, frankly. Um, because if you really think about it, for example, let's say Bioware. I love Bioware, I love their games. There is there isn't really a Bioware anymore. No one there has been there since the studio's founding. There hasn't been a Neil Druckmann situation. Um, Neil Druckmann didn't found Naughty Dog, obviously. I, I know a lot of people know that, but just in case you didn't. Mm-hmm. But he is. But when you think of Naughty Dog, who do you think of? You think of Neil Druckmann, right? If that doesn't Absolutely. happen, then what does what becomes of the company? There's no one there to kind of shepherd it. I don't know anyone there at Bioware. It doesn't seem like they really know what they're doing. But could be proven <laughs> wrong on that. But I think that's a good example of how well Nintendo's doing. They keep all these people. They really kind of do, again, what they want. They don't buy random things. Um, they seem to be very conservative with their money, too. I think that's what helped them in the Wii U. Uh, mm-hmm. They didn't go crazy when the Wii... They, you know, they didn't sell 100-something million units of Wii and be like, well, let's burn the money. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> let's start buying everybody. Boom, boom. You know, they didn't. They kind of, like, were very conservative. They had, The Wii U happened. They sucked it up for six years, I think it was. And then... Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> and then made the fucking switch. Slammed it. And the switch will probably. What, what do you think? Do you think the switch will outsell PS2 at some point? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think so um, because if they're announcing the second switch soon, it's gonna. Imagine, it's just not gonna work. You what imagine that happen, it, right? It, that will kill it. But what will happen? And this is like maybe the one thing that gets me interested in the next switch. They Nintendo understands, especially in this digital generation, how important backwards compatibility is. There's already been talks and rumors of them having understanding that they need to get the old games working in order to get it the new system. If they have, you know, a free or discounted upgrade for Breath of the Wild, for Tears of the Kingdom, for Bayonetta 3, all these games, and now they're running enhanced detail, higher frame rates, whatever you want on the next hardware. That might be enough. That might be enough for me. It, again, I'm not a Nintendo guy. I also have a second question to answer after the. Uh, sorry, ask you after this, but I'm not a Nintendo guy, so I want to preface all this being like I don't actually really know what I'm talking about, but I want to theorize on it anyways for everyone else. You have to think if if Nintendo's really looking at the cards that they really want to play, they don't want to do backwards compatibility. I would say, I would argue no company wants to do it because they want to resell you the things. The studios also don't want to either because they want to resell did you both. the games. And they, they did. They did both. Um, and I think that honestly is the best of two worlds. Just just do both. Because um, people are still going to rebuy the, the new version. But you have to think, and they look at it, it's like, how do we expand the Switch 2 into what we want it to be, which is the successor? You have to look at it and be like, make backwards compatibility a thing and then give small incentives throughout the process. Zelda now runs that thing, X thing. Now, they're not that type of company, so I feel like I'm pushing my own values onto the Switch because what I would come out and be like, Zelda runs at 60, Mario Kart runs at 60, you know, start naming things. This enhanced, this enhanced, this enhanced, this enhanced, all free day one if you own the Switch 2. And you own those games like that's mm-hmm. that's what I would do. But again, feel like I'm projecting they kind of do their own thing. So it's again, it's hard to guess. I want to ask you, though, I think is much intriguing, much more intriguing. You 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 touched on it. We're attached to the hip in terms of our brains, I feel like. <laughs> With the Steam Deck being a thing, I don't think it actually affects them monetarily in a noticeable sense. But. You seem to be a factor on if the Steam Deck didn't exist, you probably would have bought a Switch. So there certainly isn't zero, right? So it's more than zero. So you have to assume it is maybe a noticeable margin, right? What do you think about that? Do do you think the Steam Deck is actually potentially scraping some people off? Or is it hitting a new marketplace? I think the core Switch market and the core Steam Deck market are not at all the same. Yeah. I think if you are a Steam Deck person, you are in the know enough 
to know to go to valve.com or whatever the fuck yeah, to o- yeah. order one. Yeah. It is not something you're just throwing across on, on, on a store shelf. This is not something they're talking about on the view. Like you have to be in the know to even want a steam deck, let alone get one and take full advantage of it. The switch is going to sell millions because the people who care about it are the ones who saw the Mario movie and are like, I want the thing that I could play that on. I don't know what it is. I just want Mario. And then you have to get the thing that plays Mario. That is how Nintendo has been gliding by all these years. When it comes to core gamers, we're still impressed every now and then when they come out with the Tears of the Kingdom, when they come out with a, uh, you know, Mario Wonder, when they have good gameplay and good game design to back up everything else about the brand. But for the most part, I I think Switch 2 is going to have a harder time because if they do lean into, oh, everything's enhanced, higher frame rates, we have more powerful hardware, they lean into that too much. All the actually powerful hardware that's already on the market, even if it is 100 or 200 more, if you want powerful hardware in the palm of your hands and with a way wider library, that's out there already. So Switch is really going to have to lean into... Yeah, it's more powerful, but it's these specific games that are more powerful. It is Zelda. Yeah. It is Mario. These are now finally at the frame rates and resolutions that people wanted them. And people have been playing them on other platforms. Yeah. So that's really what they're going to have to do if they want to talk to the gamer crowd. But really, all they got to do is come out and say, here's the slightly modified gimmick of the new Switch. And here's all your old games updated for free so that you'll buy the new hardware immediately. That's why I struggle. Like, what is the gimmick? They always have one. They haven't really not had a gimmick since the Super NES. Like, we have mm. to go that far back to really not see what is a new thing we do with this. GameCube was it's portable. The and Nintendo sixty four maybe it, but you know it, it went um the way it was shown graphically that was kind of the gimmick. Um, uh, sixty four bit mm. and all that. Yeah. What do you? Th- what is the game? I can't. I'm struggling to. What? What is it? They the most like, and again, I that's don't know. that's that's yeah. what Nintendo does well, I guess. Right? We don't know what we want, so they they'll mm-hmm. tell us what it is. I guess. I don't quite know what the gimmick will be. Part of me feels like maybe it is just a straight refresh where it's like, hey, it's the same thing but better but different. Keep all your games here. Blah blah blah. The one gimmick I can pull out of my ass right now. If they figured out some type of wireless transfer technology to where yeah. it's no longer a dock, it's just lay the switch on this little pad and it's on your TV. If they could figure that out, that's something. That's something more impressive that gets people. Yeah. But I think that's a core gamer impressive thing rather than a, wait, you're saying the console on screen is in my hands now? That's going to get all the moms and children screaming. Yeah, I wonder if it will be a there's a station and that also plays games or you remote play to that and you can hold the switch in your hand still. Mm-hmm. And now it's a Wii they... U situation, but nah. I, I'm dumb. You know, I don't know. What I, could, the, I don't know. I couldn't imagine that. Cause then think of it like Nintendo, they just want the plug and play solution. The second you got to go streaming things and hook up a thing and yeah. find a password. And they to want to avoid that at all times. They've never been complicated. They've all, the, the <laughs> gimmicks always been simple. The Wii has been motion move your hand like there was never a it was never like plug this in stream this make sure your Wi-Fi is good blah 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 you know again projecting I I I think I that's why I struggle with Nintendo and I often don't speculate on them because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with them yeah I have no clue what they're cooking maybe hey now with the Nintendo app all these phones are controllers now so you don't have to buy Joy Cons. That could be something, but once yeah. again, I think that's a Phone core gamer excitement. Yeah, I think it's a core gamer thing rather than a normal people look at that and say, ooh, boy. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I can only speculate so much. With this is assuming rumors are true and they seem to be true. Mm-hmm. The next generation consoles being from PlayStation and Xbox will feature two SKUs, both that being handhelds. Mm. What do you think they're seeing? There seems to be a m- giant hit on the market in terms of portability. We haven't seen in an, uh, I mean, we can really say ever because mm-hmm. there never were really multiple heavy competitors in that market. We can go back to the Sega Game Gear and these things and the Nintendo Game Boy and 
talk about that but there, PS, there was PDS. yeah ps D, ds but it wasn't really like a big competition now if we look at it again if the rumors are true and plans don't change we're gonna have four competitors in the portability market which people argued was dying uh 10 years ago so what do you think they're seeing i'm assuming it's difference in market they're seeing market where people will only play portable and they each for mm -hmm. their own reason are doing portable i think xbox's reason is different from playstation's is different from sony's and or sorry different from steam and different from nintendo i'm not sure what do you think of that i honestly think they're all doing it for the same reason mm. with the exception of nintendo i think steam's whole idea of a steam deck was people have these ten thousand deep libraries on steam but they have to sit down at the two thousand dollar machine at a desk in order to play them how do we fix that put it on a handheld doesn't that sound sells millions fucking horrible everyone out there that sounds horrible <laughs> sitting on a pc and playing a video game Ugh. well look it's 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 not the couch it's the desk yeah it's and the desk, yeah Unless you're a weirdo who's already at the desk because you're cr chronically online or you work, then that's it. You're not going to sit at the desk for your entertainment for most people. And so it didn't agree with sense. me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the big reason the Steam, Deck, the Steam Deck exists. I think on the PlayStation side and on the Xbox side, PlayStation, you've built up these digital libraries. You've been claiming PlayStation Plus games since 2012. Right. Now you can play that library in the palm of your hands. Xbox, you might not. You, sometimes you've been building up games from way back in the day, but more importantly, you have 500 games on Game Pass in the palm of your hand to play right now without being online. Because mm. they have it on the phone, but you don't have to stream if it's in your hand already. So I think those are the reasons the digital age has made people build up these massive digital libraries. And they don't always feel even me i don't feel like sitting on the couch when i want to play a game i will sit in that bed and stream from one of these consoles before i get up on the couch and get the controllers out yeah that's just that it is what it is there oh. and nintendo is going to find out that a lot of people are really heavily entrenched on these other platforms to where the novelty of the handheld may not be enough <laughs> Maybe if everyone else can do that, maybe they need to figure out either some other gimmick or maybe their games need to, I don't know. No, it's not more of their games, but I'm just like, man, if everything's portable, why not put your games on these things? But we'll see. Yeah, I um, I imagine both will attempt on, I assume no one will try a marketplace anymore. I, I just don't think that works. So I assume we're going into a remote play almost kind of thing going, but maybe you'll be able to preload a game or something. I wouldn't be shocked if like, for instance, like whatever the X Xbox is doing, they somehow utilize quick resume with mm. the Ooh. system itself where you can maybe load a game onto quick resume and then it will talk to the system and then you'll be able to resume it on your thing, maybe easier or plays better or something. I don't know. Um, Ooh, switch like experience. Oh my God. That got me so excited. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you could, you could kind of see where Xbox may be going with this and, how they'll maybe utilize Game Pass with all of that. I don't know, but that's what I kind of theorize right now. Sony specifically, yeah, I, 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 it's so funny when you look at them and like they completely seeded a market and are trying to get back to it, which must they must be kicking themselves in the fucking ass. I, I, it, when you have so much money, like a company like that, it's almost worth kind of burning a little bit of it to stay relevant somewhere. Now you have to earn back the relevance. No one knows mm -hmm. what the Vita is anymore that matters and is going to buy the thing like you you need you, like just having the position there i think would have benefited them quite a bit even though it would have probably cost them quite a bit of money to stay there uh nintendo is going to nintendo i don't have anything to add with them but steam i'm curious because it seems like they also kind of do whatever they want because it's and the steam deck is different from the steam machine um i think that's what it was Very. called where they tried consoles they seem yep. to actually care and I think that's very, very different to how the Steam Machine was. Um, I, I don't, I don't think they cared two shits about the Steam Machine. I think that was a very expensive test just to see what would happen if they let that happen. What happens if you let other people make your own consoles based on your leg architecture or whatever? And let's see what happens. Clearly it didn't work, but you know that was a test. You spend money to make tests. Um, Sony admitted that the portal was a test. Uh, literally on a front financial call they wanted to see how mm -hmm. remote play would work if people would adapt it if it would boost margins xyz 
And that probably gave them enough, like, yeah, you know, it's probably worth it to do a portable machine. Um, but yeah, I, hmm. I, I think we just disagree, but I, I do think everyone's kind of going there for different reasons. It's just, it happens to happen at the same time. I think Xbox needs to diversify clearly. They keep telling us that over and over and over and over again. We are plateaued. We can't get any more people. We have to figure something else out. We're going mobile. We're going this. We're going to figure out cloud, blah, blah, blah. You know, they just keep telling us this. So diversification clear for them. Sony, I think, is actually might be the same reason is just diversifying. And uh, they also mm -hmm. seem like they've kind of hit their what they're yeah. comfortable with. And we're like, well, we might have hit the top. So we need to make more money. So day and date on PC, let's go to other markets. Let's make a whole new machine and see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'll say PlayStation, PlayStation six, you won't see VR two, but you might see V two. If you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The real ones. No, really call it PSP two. blink on that nostalgia. Cause people don't oh. even know that the Vita existed. Like yeah. it's sad out here. Yeah. I would love a Vita two, but at, at, if they were going to name a two, it would be the PSP. Um, mm -hmm. And what's funny is they've kind of, I mean, if they were, I mean, big dick and I would just call it a PlayStation Portable again. Like I would just, mm. just call it that again because it's been a That's long time. Fuck up the Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna make fun of Wikipedia. I like them. That. I don't want to. Um, yeah, we should give them more money. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Grubb said there might be an Astrobot game. This guy just kind of says things, but I thought it'd be interesting to report on since we, uh, I had you on about two and a half weeks ago or something like that, Emmett. We had just mm -hmm. had a great conversation about Astrobot. Looks like we potentially might get an Astrobot this year. Um, remember Jeff Grubb? He literally means he has heard they might, you know, so don't fucking okay. stamp this on your skin, but yeah, maybe. I'll say this about that. Um, all this talk about, oh, PlayStation, they, they, they're they having to diversify, they're having to get more money from other platforms, all this other stuff, and all the killing of the Last of Us video game and how there's not going to be any major uh, big AAA titles from the big franchises you know from PlayStation, all that. There's a video I once watched. This is going to be fucked up for you to even say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Oh, here we go. There's a video I watched one time of a certain genre of internet video where it took this woman a very, very, very long time to do what she was trying to do. And at the very end of it, she finally did what she was trying to do and then just collapsed on the floor and just said, it was worth it. All that bullshit. It was worth it. This this will be worth it. This will be worth all that bullshit. It will be. It will be. I, I agree. I agree, especially with the genre. Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> I, I love Ask about though, yes. I think... I think it's time, especially given what Astrobot is. Um, now, will it be a rescue mission? Will it be a hybrid? That's what I want to know. I think that's extraction a shooter. Extra It'll be an extraction <laughs> shooter. Marathon's oh like God. fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna run a marathon to find the nearest cliff to jump off of. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, at New Astrobot, I feel like that's a perfect tier of, hey, this is the down year where we don't have a Last of Us, a Spider-Man, or whatever to come out. Astrobot is the perfect game to rally people around and still sell a couple million, even if it isn't 10. Yeah, I think so, too. And it's like a nice supplement to make people feel like there was a game this year, even though Helldivers, I think, is actually filling that void, um, mm -hmm. especially if they have a big kind of update in six months i think that'll make it feel like playstation still here even though they aren't at all because they don't own airhead and that was just a thing that they uh have a partnership with absolutely an hour and 42 minutes in the show let's actually start the show for the week <laughs> now we <laughs> talked about this leading up multiple times and i thought it was very intriguing we finally have our finally have our answers to the situation we have the xbox podcast featuring phil the the three phil <laughs> matt booty and sarah bond and the holy ghost and they yeah and the holy ghost uh and they told us exactly what i think once the column settled what we figured it was clearly overblown um i didn't even do a write-up because i think this will serve better as just a conversation just like the podcast we did uh, or sorry the podcast we just watched um, Emmett, I want to hear your thoughts first, actually, because I have a lot to say, but I I really am curious what what you want what you have to say about this. Man, we we were burning our houses down for what? <laughs> 
like people are losing their minds for what this we had a massive overreaction on the internet and you know ultimately especially considering the playstation announcements that happened within the last few days as well right after right before this showcase came out i think people are always look companies are always looking for more money more money more money and when you've hit the limit of the amount of money you can make with one market you must expand to another market that is what's happening with microsoft that is what's been happening with playstation nintendo does not play by the same rules they can expand into theme parks they can expand into movies so that's where they're at yep. but here we are with microsoft and they've hit the limit on what they can do with just their hardware so why not try out PlayStation, of course? Now, of course, they're testing the waters, quote unquote, with these quote, four games. Quote. I think it's pretty heavy there. I think that yeah, quote yeah. we just did is doing a lot of lifting. It's like the meme with the, with with like the, like like the guy like holding the flames and stuff. Like mm-hmm. no, it, it's, it's, it's Spider Man with the bus. <laughs> yeah, holding the bus. That yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like they're testing out these four titles, and these four titles do make a lot of sense. You know. The rumor is it's what Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush, Grounded, and Sea of Thieves. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah. perfect I, sense. I, and I will say, uh, I, I I felt proud of myself because I figured it out while I was watching the podcast. This will mean nothing to anyone, but I was like, oh shit, I was right. Like I literally on the podcast <laughs> halfway through, or no, I think it was over, and I was like reviewing everything, and I was like, if it, so, it's two small ones too. And so is it this this? And I was like, is it Grounded? You fucking nailed it. I got on Twitter and mm-hmm. fucking. Uh, Tom Warren already had them all, so it didn't matter. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's absolutely like those are obvious ones to pick because they're smaller titles, and they are. You know, if if Fallout seventy six is any indication, the bulk, the biggest player base for that game is on PlayStation four. Yeah. So why not copy that success with Grounded and Sea of Thieves, and also get more players for something like a Hi Fi and something like a uh, Pentiment? Um, but ultimately, it makes sense. What they couldn't talk about here, and it makes sense that they couldn't talk about it here which is way more interesting to me. What does this mean for the Gears of Wars, the Halos, the Forzas? Great games in their own rights. They're biggest sellers. You could sell an extra two to five million of all those franchises if you put them on PlayStation. Point blank, period. Those games, we, us Xbox loyal have been talking up Gears of War forever. We've been talking up Halo forever. We've been talking up uh forza especially on a platform where yeah uh gran turismo sells a lot and people love gran turismo you want a fundraising game forza's the one (laughs) yeah so like you know we've been talking about these franchises you will sell a shit ton if you go over there and they know it i think everyone else knows it this is just the this is capitalism capitalizing again but it's ruining something that actually should have been ruined a long time ago forget buying a console and feeling loyalty to it it is absurd that the games industry is the only industry where if I buy a Blu-ray player, it better be able to play all the movies. If I buy a Sony Blu-ray player and it can't play anything but movies from Columbia Pictures, I'm pissed off. <laughs> but we've normalized that in games. It can only play these games. These are exclusive, blah, blah, blah. I want that entire market to be gone. I think that will be great for players. And then it will force the people who do make the consoles. Sony can't just trust that you're going to buy God of War. So the console is secondary. They have to look at quick resume and be like, shit, we need something like that. They got to look at the switch and be like, damn, we need something like that. They have to actually have hardware worth a damn and not just make it more powerful because they know you're coming for the games. You have to justify the hardware. So that's really what I'm excited about. This is the first step of that future. Is that future PlayStation 6? Is it that close? I question if it is. With all the handhelds, it might be. But this is the first step in that future where... The games are everywhere. Now you have to actually give me a reason to play this game in this place. And that's really exciting. But man, it's going to be a lot of complaining and kicking and screaming until we get there. So that's why I feel about it. I think you said a lot of thoughtful things there. Um, I will have to say, many people have theorized for a long time, people especially outside of the industry. I think Satya Novell is a recent example of that where he just is clearly isn't super into like the gaming ecosystem and it's weird to him right he's the mm-hmm. ceo of microsoft of course um he thinks it's really weird obviously i i find it harder to take the word of a phil saying why are there exclusives you know uh, keep in, talking you're, you're, some water keep talking yeah go ahead area. yeah yeah uh when i see phil spencer say that i don't really take much account because one yeah of course you don't care about exclusive because you're in last place my guy I, I you know i 
once you say once you say something like that, I'm like, I don't really garner that much. But when I see someone very very knowledgeable like a Sati Nadella and someone very into uh, the very very hard nuances of how to run a business and the thing, yeah, you have to think about at the end of the day, exclusives doesn't really make sense. I think Emmett makes a very good example. Something I actually talked about last week on here. Uh, it's weird. If you really think about it, it is very weird that we do exclusives at all. Uh, movies don't do that. Music, there's never been really anything like that. Uh, podcasts don't really do that either. You know, there isn't really a form of entertainment we do that really is a technically exclusive. Streaming services kind of are doing that, but that that's at the end of the day, basically channels at this point on a TV. So with all that added yeah you you do kind of see a future where exclusives don't really matter especially if you do something where hey everything goes everywhere after a year or six months or something like that but now that we brought that up, i actually want to back up a little bit and really talk about the interesting thing that they're discussing here so they're saying phil says for there's four games he immediately rules out starfield and indiana jones i think is very interesting that he did that one that we know hmm. Bethesda wants to be multi-platform from the FTC leaks and emails and these things. Uh, so I'm sure that pissed them. <laughs> I'm sure Todd didn't like that. Phil Hines is already gone. Um, they lost a very, very good uh, 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 hire with Phil Hines. I don't know how they mm -hmm. fucked that up, but they did. And when you lay it all out that way, he he makes it very clear it's not going to be those two big games. It's just these four to test. You have to ask yourself, what are we testing? Because we We're know... The inevitable. <laughs> yeah, we know what's going to happen. They're going to sell well because they're going to an active market with many, many tens of millions of people. Well, you can theorize, what? 35 million active... Xboxes what, between... out there or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like you, you can theorize like somewhere around there. They're, they're being outsold like two to one almost, probably a little more, probably mm -hmm. like 2.5 or something like that by PlayStation. So if you had to like kind of theorize like how many active people are actually in the marketplace trying to play games, you know, they're much smaller, right? So when you expand into a Switch with Hi Fi Rush, possibly going to be shown at a Nintendo Direct very soon. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be shocked if that's what ends the show. Hi-Fi Rush comes in a Nintendo Switch right now or, or maybe in a month or two. Uh, and I'm sure that game will sell very well. Uh, I, you have to ask yourself, what do you mean by your testing? Uh, guy, we know what's going to happen. They're going to sell well, and you're going to want to keep doing this with games that you think will be okay you let go. I agree, first and foremost. Games as a service being exclusive at the end of the day, don't really make sense for the game ever. It never will. It doesn't, uh, you need for a game as a service to work. You need players. The way you get players being as many, it, making it easy as possible to play your game or experience Fortnite. it in some way. Fortnite. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And when you make that exclusive, I think hell divers is actually a great example. It would have been nowhere near as popular without the PC day and date. I I, I, have, mm -hmm. I hope formed by that. It would not have the zeitgeist it does right now. It also wouldn't have the fucking sales right now, which I know PlayStation's looking at that like, ooh, okay. Uh, day and date makes way more fucking sense. Why haven't we been doing this more? I, we are... I wouldn't be shocked if we adapt that very quickly. Like, something that people are... Now, I wouldn't be shocked if the next God of War, for instance, is Dan Day. Like it, I Fuck don't that. think Astro bought on Steam Deck. Let's <laughs> fucking go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that too, like I would not be shocked because at the end of the day, especially this deep in a life cycle, although it, you can't really undo if you do it, uh this deep in a life cycle, you probably have a PS5 if you're gonna buy one. Or you are in a situation where you are going to get one, but you don't have access to it thousand dollar pc twelve hundred dollar pc to like play some of these games eight hundred dollars fill in the blank mm -hmm. so you're either waiting to get one financially or reason or you're just never gonna buy one so at this at that point it's like yeah why why make it exclusive just make it day and date xbox has done that for a long time i imagine for different reasons though that at the end of the day they needed that probably to exist more than like they had the choice 
I don't know, but you you imagine the Xbox One fucked them so bad that they were probably like, make it day and day, <laughs> like make sure <laughs> you know, make sure we get an extra revenue source uh, to counteract what's happening to the Xbox One. But I think there's so many things that we can come off this. I I think it's weird that he put it as a test. I think none of this would have happened if um. I mean, clearly a high level executive leaked this. Someone's pissed. I don't know who it is. Um, because you imagine not many people knew about this. So mm-hmm. who leaked it? Who said something? Um, I will say a lot of people with just completely wrong information. I hope whoever, you know, those communities, you know, rile them up and make them like demand why you, why did you make stuff? Like a lot of people are saying wild stuff. Wild mm-hmm. stuff. Halo Infinite's coming. Oh, like everything. It, it, like, yeah. And they're way off. Master market. Chief just, Collection. Yeah, Master Chief Collection, which is an old rumor that they probably assume, but they, they're just guessing. That's, they had a PS4 port for that years ago that they're just fiddling around with, thought about launching it. Um, so at the end of the day, I this was a giant firestorm that really, when you walked up to it, was just a little campfire. <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. That's all it was. This was a huge, huge blown out thing. I don't think um, I don't think this really matters at the end of the day. As a guy who plays only on Xbox, I don't care if any of those games leave. There's no situation where I play um, where I move the PlayStation as long as the games are reliably exclusive in a normal frame. Right. I don't want I don't think we'll ever see day and day. If we do, that'll be a completely different change of space. But mm-hmm. if a year, six months, they just let it go everywhere. I don't give a shit. I think exactly. it's healthy to make exclusives because that's how you sell consoles. Um, I don't know what Phil means when he's like, oh, exclusive. Like or he kind of insinuates exclusives almost don't matter. I'm like, well, PlayStation and Switch are right there. So I don't know what you're talking about, but. I know what he. I, I know the spirit is. He's like trying to be like. Well, we should just. We should fight with services versus hard uh, software, uh, with our, uh, for versus trying to actually. Because they know they can win if they make that the plan. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Thank you for fixing my little fuck up there. Um, <laughs> because they know they'll win on services. They have. I've long said this on the show. They have. They they can out engineer PlayStation. All day, all day. I I, mm-hmm. I am not shitting you. Where they would have figured out PS3 backward compatibility years ago. I oh, honestly, fuck yeah. I think that with my whole heart. And I think they would have figured it out, and they would have already have done that and fixed it. I 100 percent believed Xbox One was not able to run 360 games, and they figured it out. Mm-hmm. Sony's over here still struggling with cell processing. And I know there's rumors that they have some working. I don't care. They don't have it going, so it doesn't matter. I don't care if they have some games working. They have not figured it out. I'm not even convinced they're really trying that hard. I don't think <laughs> they're care, trying yeah. at all. I don't think they care. I think they probably figured some games out just to test. They probably have some R and Ding in the background with some software that are probably messing around with. But I don't think they actually care. Like this is a priority. I mean, look how long it took them to 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 figure out name changes. Yeah, like, really think shit. about that, everyone. Uh, Take a, a second. generation and a half. <laughs> Take a second. That's how Mm-mm. that that's that's the level of engineering we're talking about. Like they're, they're not an engineering company. They don't know how really to do it. They they clearly. I mean, the fucking PSN was on a browser for like six years or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it was the first uh, four years of the PlayStation Three almost, and. Also, another point, like, even when it's already done, when it's not a technical challenge, it is a logistical challenge. Yes. When Fortnite had people playing crossplay before they allowed it, it was, all right, we got to turn that off. And now yeah. everyone knows it's possible. Yeah. Now it's a question of why can't we do it? Yeah, and why aren't we doing it? Yeah. Seven months later, you put out a blog post, we're going to test this out. It's not a test. You know what the mm-hmm. fuck is going on. In yeah. the same way we're with the Xbox, it's not a test. They it's know what the test. fuck is going on. Yeah. I think when it comes to Xbox, though, they need to say they have to it's them. a test so that when it does come out as a full rollout, when there is gears on PlayStation and all that, mm-hmm. you can have the last two, three years of sales numbers of things blowing up on other platforms 
to justify it so people don't say well, why are you betraying us it's like we're not betraying you we're staying loyal to who we've always been loyal to the dollar <laughs> yeah the dollar we, we never cared about uh exclusives and the and or they haven't cared since phil has been there um i would i would mm-hmm. argue they, they clearly don't they haven't made many of them um they've made they want they're already game pass you know what this is a good point to bring in this memo so there was a memo that came out a little bit before the actual podcast came out obviously it was recorded before this so you know it you know get creative in your mind here's a memo this is from the verge (laughs) um today at noon this is from phil to the entire team uh at xbox Today at noon Pacific, we'll be posting a special episode of the Xbox official podcast. In this episode, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty, and I will share with the community our plans for the future of Xbox. We'll also discuss how our vision will benefit our players, creators, and the industry as a whole. When we look at the state of our medium, we see players increasingly gaming on multiple devices, but their experience is defined by that fragmentation created by platform silos. Multiple device players have to navigate multiple identities entitlement libraries communities wallets and rewards programs similarly the industry's biggest franchises increasingly ship across multiple devices requiring creators to build and manage multiple instances of their games leading to higher costs and fragmented communities all this friction creates a tremendous opportunity for us to meet the needs of multiple device players and creators we have a different vision for the future of gaming a future where players have a unified experience across devices a future where players can easily discover a vast array of games with a diverse spectrum of business models a future where more creators are empowered to realize their creative vision reach a global audience unite their communities and succeed commercially a future where every screen (laughs) is in xbox this is a future where xbox is everywhere Consistent with our promise to empower players to, quote, play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want, end quote. This is the beginning of this memo. That last paragraph covers everything you need to know what Xbox wants to do. They almost want to be like a hub that can, like, house things when you read it that way. They want mm-hmm. Game Pass to be a thing. Then they want Xbox to be this giant circle that manages your phone, your TV, your thing, and it's all one unified experience, one you, one store. You buy a game, I imagine. You you can play it on your P- Project X Portable and your Project W fucking TV, whatever you want to say. <laughs> this is I what mean, they want to do, and this is where mm-hmm. they start doing that. How do we diversify because we have completely plateaued and we can't sell games. They can't sell games on Xbox. You want to know why? Because everyone fucking does Game Pass. They, that they cannibalize themselves, right? So you have to get creative. What do we do? Expand our market. How do we do that? Well, we can look at mobile. We can look at TVs. We can look at portable gaming. We can look at our rival platforms because at the end of the day, we don't give a fuck where you play. We want don't you to give there. us money. <laughs> we mm-hmm. need the money. So absolutely, let's start giving out games slowly over time. Start with some small things that no one cares about. Our games as a service, our small games. Your high fi rushes, your pentiments, your Viva Pinata. <laughs> yeah, your your <laughs> you know, you, like let's get uh but at the end of the day, they're made being very clear. I need everyone to understand the future of Xbox is everywhere. That they say they're telling us what it is. Every screen is an Xbox. We have to stop thinking like they're this platform holder. They're not PlayStation, to be frank. They're not mm-hmm. Switch. They're this own nebulous thing. They're, they want to be Steam, frankly. I think they want to yeah. be a Steam that is more than just you come here to buy games. You come here to buy games, to chat, to 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 uh, maybe text chat, maybe video chat. Maybe you come here to also buy something that will also work on your mobile phone and will also play on your Xbox Series 11D5. Like, we don't... It's hard to think about it now, but that's probably what he thinks. And that's probably the only reason they also have jobs, because I think Satya really likes this vision. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, let's be honest, Matt Booty, how the fuck does he still have a job? I I have no idea. (laughs) I I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know. know much about Mad Booty enough to say that, but I'll, uh, yeah. well, you, how, let me. I want you to go look and look at Xbox Studios and see what they've released. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like that is the look, problem. Like this guy I, clearly hmm. doesn't know how to produce and help things, and he got fucking promoted. He's got promoted. Mm. Like mm. I don't know what's going on over there. I need them to figure out how to make games. Clearly, that is not the priority anymore, though. It is nurturing a community, figuring out how to use Game Pass in an aggressive way to where you can get that service everywhere. I think the problem is people are like, oh, game Xbox Studios aren't putting out games to the same degree as Sony is. We have very clearly seen what it costs in order to do that. Whether or not you got good creative people, whether or not you got a good group of people making the games themselves, it's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars to create something like that. So Xbox knows that and are probably a little bit cheapish to give seven years and $300 million to any company to create something like that. Yeah. So they'll pick and up a Bethesda while they're halfway through making something like that rather than here you go, coalition, go off. And even then it takes a while for that to come through as we've been seeing. Yeah. You have to think about too, like they, they had the books. Right. Do you, mm-hmm. you think like really like like st- stay with me, uh, listener? They do have favorite. the books. They have the money, but no they, one they, they, they don't want to spend that much money. Right. Right. Not, but, but, not Microsoft. W- right. Let me <laughs> let me. Sorry. Let's, let's really think about this. Like you like mm-hmm. they have the books. They look. Hey, this is how much to start to, to, to keep going with Skyrim. Right. This is how much it's going to take. This is how much man hours. This is your return. This is how much it's going to cost this when they do all that. That doesn't make any fucking sense with how Game Pass works right now, right? Doesn't make mm-hmm. sense, right? So what do you do, right? You figure out how to keep making money off of it. All right, well, um, so and sell on PlayStation. That boom, and now you've now you've now made it all make sense, and mm-hmm. you get to also all of this. Everything we're talking about is free advertisement for Game Pass. All of it. A Absolutely. consumer will continually see themselves paying seventy dollars. This is what happened with movies. I'll wait for it on Netflix. This is the, they're trying to get the wait for it on Netflix mindset on Xbox through selling their games everywhere. The Switch owner is a unique one because that I don't really count them in this because normally a Switch owner has multiple devices. So usually a Switch is also with something else. So we're just going to talk about PlayStation in this specific instance because it's easier. Mm-hmm. With a PlayStation gamer continually buying the same like the, the the games and they keep noticing, wait, I love Elder Scrolls and I really love Call of Duty, and I just spent like a hundred and forty bucks, mm-hmm. and you know what? I'm probably also gonna buy the next Doom. Now I'm at <laughs> two something, and then I'm also gonna want the latest Arcane game. Hmm, you know what? I can just go to fucking xbox and and so you have to like really think about it they might be trying to cut some people this way as well who knows mm-hmm. but they really are the only ones who know yeah and if the rumors work out to be true then it's not maybe i'll get a, a series x and a ps5 it's maybe i'll still get the ps6 but then spend 300 400 yeah. only for whatever that handheld is going to be, Good whatever point. the series S equivalence is next year, um, they're going to get you. And even if you don't want to do any of that, fifteen a month, and you can play it on your phone or TV. Yeah, phone, TV, PC. Like so, mm-hmm. once they once they have this kind of going, you can see the vision. Right now, it does it does look weird. Um, mm-hmm. And let's get into some numbers here. So I want I want your opinion on a few of these. One, they announced Game Pass numbers being thirty four million uh, paid subscribers. Hmm. So. I thought this was quite interesting because this does include the Game Pass core conversion. Huh. Uh, so th- that's not great. I thought it'd be much higher when they converted the gold to Game Pass core. Um, if you don't remember, Xbox Live Gold, of course, was the way you used to play online. They have now renamed that whole structure. Now it is Game Pass core, uh, Game Pass, and then Game Pass Ultimate, I believe, are the three tiers you can go yep. to Game Pass core being you get online and here's like 10 or 20 game pass games and then game pass gets you yeah and then game pass is like 100 and then it's game pass ultimate you get everything Mm -hmm. well game pass base game pass right after the core that's just 
everything on Game Pass. It's just it's only for your console. It's only what you can play on a physical Xbox. That's right. Sorry. I yeah. That Ultimate. Up. Yes. Ultimate is where streaming comes in, where PC comes in, etc., yes. etc. Ultimate gets you. Yeah. P- cloud. Blah, 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 yeah. Game Pass now. Yeah. It's. I still. I only do. Ultimate, it's. It's a so lot. It's hard to. It's hard to remember. I get it. That. Same um, here. Yeah. I get it. So quickly to note on this, this was an interview with Steven Satillo over at um, Divergent, I believe. Um, Xbox okay. head Phil Spencer elaborated more on the figure, noting that it isn't simply counting players on free trials or other promotional deals. Quote, mm. that's fully paid, end quote, Spencer explained. Quote, so they are not promotional player. Those are people fully paid subs, end quote. Why would you say that then? That is really weird. That is, that is weird. I don't know why you mm. would say it like that then if you had to clarify it on an interview. So that's weird that they chose to say that because it's in- inherently confusing. Yeah, it's not counting yeah. people. It's just people paying for it. I was like, okay, sure. But then why'd you say that? Because that's that's confusing. And it hmm. doesn't count trial people. How many is that? Who the fuck knows? So uh, maybe that maybe another million or two. I don't know. It can't be that many, but maybe it is. I, I'm not sure. They did a lot of crazy stuff to try and get you on Game Pass originally. That I'm sure people took advantage of, but is that that many people? I don't know, but 34 just seemed low, even when you say, well, it's only people who have fully paid and they're not on trials. I mean, are there 12 million trials right now? Maybe, but it doesn't feel like that. Eh, I'll say this. So IGN put out an article not too long ago. I'm actually opening this up instead of just reading the Google yeah, go ahead. snippet. Um, from Michael, don't go, Michael Cripp. Um, basically saying that according to data that they have right now uh it suggests that ps5 is outsold xbox series x uh two to one and if you do the math on that then it looks like xbox is selling about 21 million so far um just for series x consoles series x and s so if it's 21 million consoles out there and 34 million game pass people that's complete saturation to the entire console market yeah. So that's great if you want to consider that. That's like 100% saturation. And then on top of that, you got a good 12 million that are just on phones or just on PC. I think that's really good. Mm. It's just the fact that those are the numbers we're talking about because it is restricted just to this console. Or if you're on PC, I think on PC, when Steam sales are a thing, where Humble Bundles are a thing, where emulation is a thing it's harder to get someone to get on board with well i pay monthly and i have access to all these games you already have access to all these games if you just decided to not care about the ecosystem like that or wanted to get get on there with steam um so you know that's probably justification for the relatively low number but like we've been talking about you you hit up playstation you hit up switch put your games on there a lot more people are going to be looking at this a lot more people are going to be aware for the first time that something like this even exists and see, oh wait, so the new the new Bethesda game came out on Game Pass, or the new Doom came out on Game Pass, or the new Call of Duty is on Game Pass, it's gonna turn a lot of people's heads. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to the next bullet point because that that invites a bigger question that I think is even gonna be bigger for Game Pass. Yeah, and I will quickly add, um, if it is like two to one, you would imagine it'd be closer to like twenty five million consoles or maybe oh, yeah, twenty four. Because Mm PS5 is sold like around 50, and then if you account for that, maybe it's a little more from the holiday season. We don't really know. This is all guessing. They'll never tell us because it doesn't sell well. Um, Mm -hmm. So who knows? But yeah, I agree. It is hit. I mean, they've said it a million times. It's saturated. So they do have to figure out more ways to make money. I think they, I think Phil, I think Phil uh, underestimated how many people would actually like come back to Xbox. I think he thought the number would be much higher by now. And I think it's just clear that they have to figure something out to keep it going. Hmm. Well, I know what they're about to figure out and that's the next yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So they are, they took this time as well to announce Diablo four is going to be coming to game pass March 28th. Now, what I want to make clear here is it, it's very important. We listen to this because I saw a lot of people run with this. They mm-hmm. did not say, li- listen, they did not say day and date at no point when Sarah Bond was talking did you say Xbox um, Activision Blizzard games 
will come mm-hmm. day and date to Game Pass. All she said was Activision Blizzard games will come to Game Pass. That's that's what she said verbatim. Okay, mm-hmm. I saw a lot of people saying like they said they didn't. No, no, no. We have to we have to take them at their word. They're. I mean, they th- this is Xbox official podcast. Like they're not going to slip words. So this is very mm-hmm. very particular wording. Now, all that being said, that's interesting. They, they, what tactic will they employ with this? I am unsure. Will they go aggressive with Call of Duty? Maybe figure something out. Be like, oh, in March, Call of Duty comes to Game Pass. Will it? Will I don't think they'll be incredibly aggressive with this because they need to make money off of this. That there is no like situation where this is day and day Game Pass Call of Duty every day. I think Mm -hmm. it gets a little more creative with like you can kind of guess like, oh, it's like three to four months. And then it comes to Game Pass with this thing also added or something. I'm sure the the slow drip of Activision Blizzard games is coming. Where's prototype? That's all I'm going to say. Singularity, my guy. (laughs) Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, another good one. Um, What did you say? you said yeah. you wanted to speak on this. I, I want. I want to hear. What do you think of this? Is my analysis here kind of on the point? I don't think they're going to be aggressive with Call of Duty. Everything else to me is a question mark. What, for instance, Diablo Five is that on Game Pass Day One? I don't know. I. I, I don't know. I. I maybe. I'm pretty confident in the following thing I'm about to say. I think, in the short term, you're right. No day and date for Activision Blizzard games. I think that's a little bit too massive to immediately right off the bat go on to. I think the immediate future, maybe it's the same date as March 28th when Diablo 4 comes. I think in the immediate future, you are absolutely getting every back catalog Call of Duty oh, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, but I'm like, curious you how underestimate how big, it, how big that is. Yeah, no. That's 24 games. Mm-hmm. 25. Something that's, like that. Let's that's, do the math on everything on Xbox backwards compatible. So COD 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, World at War. Yeah. Uh, Modern fucking, Warfare 1, 2, 3. We yeah, have 1, 2, 3, Modern Warfare. Well, we already did Modern Warfare 1. So 2 oh, and 3. Did. 2 and 3. Uh, yeah, because Call of Duty 4 is Modern Warfare 1. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Call Black Ops 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So we're already at 11. Uh, Infinite Warfare. Fucking. Oh, Advanced my Warfare. God. Advanced Warfare, Vanguard, uh, the reboots of Modern Warfare get, 1 and 2 yeah, and did 3. You, did you get World War 2, that one? Call of Duty World War, War 2. Yeah. Yeah. So we're at, what, 18 right now? Right. Like You can easily get to like 20 to 22. Exactly, exactly. So just just Call of Duty alone, not only is it catching all the people who want to get on the Modern Warfare 3 right now, the new one, but it's all the nostalgia. Every yeah. Call of Duty YouTuber is now like, "Hey guys, just get an Xbox." That's yeah. every COD game. It'll be it'll be in this face like Call of Duty Black Ops on Game Pass. Exactly. It'll be that. It'll be that. Oh my god, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. wait. Uh, I will say that is important, and it's funny when you think about it. Like if 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 the benchmark of Game Pass, which it won't be after this, but if the Game Pass benchmark is have a hundred games, a fourth will be <laughs> Call of Duty. Like nearly a fourth. Mm-hmm. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. I don't think. Um, I'll be curious on like how they'll pitch this now because will there be? Le- I mean, because we're getting because s- with Activision the drip feed slowly happening. Do you, do you like become? Do you get crazy with it and like, hey, we have two hundred games now with all this added. I mean, it sounds like. Once you get so that high, is it like Jesus? That sounds like kind of unwieldy, like almost like that's so many games that might turn people off, maybe. But I don't know, maybe, maybe that'll be like someone be like, Yeah, I can play that forever or something. I don't know. Well, no one's going to look at the number, they're going to look at what are the games. And besides even Call of Duty, you got Crash Bandicoot Nostalgia, put all those on there, Spyro the Dragon, put all those on there, yeah, fucking uh, Tony Hawk, you know, they yeah, they stopped the backwards compatibility program, but who said they fired all those people? Yeah, they're doing something. They're they're yeah. that, was, that was a whole team dedicated to like the pretty much playtesting and like engineering games, which is so cool. Like mm-hmm. they didn't have to like do who any said, of that. Exactly. And who said they can't go back into it now that they have Activision and say, hey, let's get 
the Xbox port of all these Tony Hawk games working. Let's get let's get the Spyro the Dragon game with Wayne Brady as one of the voices. Let's get that 360 launch title working. Like yeah. all these weird games from the past, and it won't be. Oh, these games are those are de facto exclusives because PlayStation isn't doing the work to get that running, even if they wanted to put if it over there. To, yeah. So, like you know, that's really going to be big, and I think people are underestimating how big that's going to be just with the back catalog stuff. And then in like five, six years, when it is every Call of Duty is day one on Game Pass, that's just an easy like. I'm a kid who gets Call of Duty every single year, no matter yeah. what. Why am I on PlayStation at that point? Yeah, the teenage, you know I mean? like teenage, like young adult, would be huge if they mm-hmm. kind of figure that out, and they're able to be the number one uh, Christmas item, which is always like huge. When I forget who does that, but like someone does the math and figures out like what's the number one Christmas list item, and if they can figure that out in five six years, I don't know, mm-hmm. they might see a huge Cause... return on this. It's just what makes me confused is how do they make enough money to make all these games you know like don't know i I, that's where that's that's what and maybe the diversification helps them i don't know but it does i i think the diversification is the one it's it's a lot of money but you got to think of it they're making buku money off of minecraft buku money off of now call of duty buku money off of you know all the blizzard franchises that make a lot of money they're making buku money off of all these small things and yes making all these games call of duty money alone can't make all those games yeah but it can contribute to the wider pot of everything else because at the end of the day all these things you know even all the bethesda games that are getting sold and all that yeah that's giving money but this is still microsoft on top of that they got microsoft word money Mm. (laughs) like they got all that to rely on as well so you know, I'm never concerned about them, you know, going bankrupt or like that. No, no, that was profitable. never the concern. But oh, yeah, with yeah, a company yeah. like that, like you want the money to come from the division. Right. That That's how you kind of piss off the higher executives. It's just like, are we sinking money into this thing? You know, it mm-hmm. needs to have a return. So as long as the return is good, I'm just curious, like, when are they going to start making fat money? Because that because they're going to start needing to make fat money. I mean, they just spent sixty nine billion dollars like I they gotta they figure. To, they gotta figure it out. I think it's just about synergy. I think you know, Phil Spencer's talked about we want to have a big Xbox game hitting every single quarter. Yeah, they've had enough studios damn to near do a that month now. Yeah, well, it's been a month. They have enough studios to go ahead and do that every single quarter. But the thing that's more important is before you had to really plan it out. You had to be like, all right, uh, double fine, put out your game here, so that by the time it's your turn again. It's been a good three years since your quarter comes back around where we need you to deliver. Yeah. Now they have even more chess pieces to play that same game with. So now it's not double fine. You got three years because your quarter's coming back around. It's double fine. You got like seven or eight. And considering the the new standards for AAA games, that is right amount. That is right about the amount of time that companies need to make a big massive triple a game so now you got seven years to deal with now we can have an activision game come out this quarter have a have a machine games game come out this quarter and they can hit their targets but they have just figured out everything they just signed all the papers now it's matt booty and all the people around him having the plan out be like all right you're this month you're this month you're this month and if something falls out of line then we can have some DLC for Halo Infinite or have some like smaller thing, like a Pentiment come in. Like we can have these things plug up the gaps because you have so much more to work with. I think they finally have all the pieces to do that. That's just not going to be realized until mm. earliest point this time next year. Yeah. Yeah. They, they do just need time. Um, Really quickly. I remember you did say you have to go at five. Do you have to go now? Um, I got a couple more minutes. 530, we'll call it. Oh, five there. Okay, I, I think we can get through the through the rest of this. Um, just to close it out, uh, Matt Booty did also say ten games are coming, and they're excited for them. So mm. cool. Um, that does show the aggression that I think the Xbox needs to really start succeeding. Because uh, I mean, I don't know how many times like I say they just haven't had the games and the quality to hit it. So once they start hitting with all this, I think it will be very big, and maybe this is the beginning of hey. Game a quarter, game every maybe two games a quarter now with Activision Blizzard. I don't know. Um, um, they have so much I, now. 
they shouldn't be so bullish because that's how you drain it. That's yeah, how you end that up like PlayStation where yeah. they've blown their load and now they yeah. got to chill the rest of the generation. That, that is true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think this is their year. This yeah, could be their year. This is a quick one. Um, J- June 2024 showcase was also shown off. Or not shown off, I'm sorry, announced by Sarah Bond. Hardware details will be coming this holiday. We already saw that in the FTC leak. If you want to go find them, I did a show or you can just go look at a picture. Uh, and we pretty much covered everything. There was ru- more rumors. Flight Sim might come out for multi-platform. The next Doom might be multi-platform, and they're thinking about Gears of War. More of we're thinking, we're you know, we're hearing about them talking about. I don't put too much stake on that uh, because I'm sure they talked about everything. So doesn't <laughs> not really. I want to see like substance more than they talked about. All right. Yep. We talked about Xbox. We talked about Sony. We hit everyone today. We hit Switch. We hit Sony. It's very fun. <laughs> a Sony financial calls uh, has revealed quite a bit about their performance. Sony president Hiroki Totoki offered his impressions on the gaming silo of Sony. The next couple quotes will be gathered from IGN himself, but they are from originally the earnings call. Quote, I'm trying to demonstrate leadership, and I'm trying to have as many meetings as possible with the management team. Also, visit studios. Everyone is working really hard to feel their responsibility to try to optimize the business, and I understand that. But overall growth and sustainable profit or increasing margin, how will that translate to these goals? I don't think people understand that deeply. I think that is the problem of the organization. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm trying to understand what is happening in the company, in the industry, and also at the perspective of analysts and try to explain in a transparent manner so people can recognize and notice these issues so we can have a harmonized approach going forward. That is a very general comment since I have become the chairperson. There are concrete points which I will not go in today, end quote. He expands on this a little bit later. He's asked about, um, I think he's asked again about specifically PlayStation games, if I'm remembering correctly. Quote, now about visiting the studio. Oh, no, he was about asked about the visiting studio, sorry. Quote, now about visiting to the studios. I've had meetings with leaders at the studios. People who work in the studios are very (laughs) highly motivated. They're very good people, and they're very creative people. They have great creative minds, and 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 they also have knowledge about live streaming. However, having said that, when it comes to the business itself, I think there is room for improvement. And that has to do with how do you use the money or about the schedule of development or how to fulfill one's accountability towards development. Those are my frank impressions. So we'll hmm. continue to engage in dialogue with the people we so we can find the right way to proceed. End quote. Almost done. This same mm-hmm. call also revealed there will be no new major AAA existing franchises to release this year. Quote, regarding first-party software, we aim to continue, and, and I'm going to enter in really quick. Make sure you listen To the exact words of this quote, this is important. People have misconstrued this greatly. We aim to continue to focus on producing high-quality works and developing live service games. But while while major projects are currently under development, we do not plan to release any new major existing franchise titles next fiscal year, like God of War Ragnarok and Marvel's Spider-Man 2, end quote. And on top of all this, Sony has cut their forecast yet again for this year. They've done this every year, so I don't mean they've cut this year again. They do this almost every year. They kind of oversell how many they're going to sell for PS5 units from 25 million units to 21 million units. That is their forecast for this coming year. Another quick thing to mention, it was stated that the PS5 has entered its, quote, latter half of its life cycle, end quote. Another thing that was misconstrued from this... I, I have to take a second to really complain because I haven't complained enough today. Emmett, <laughs> please, yes. what is people's problem with reading comprehension now? Not only in regular everyday people who are ingesting this stuff, right? Don't necessarily blame them. Although if you have the balls to tweet, you should have the balls to like actually read and like try and understand what you're talking about. Or you look kind of like a jackass. I'm guilty <laughs> of doing that all the time. I'm not calling anyone out. But people like IGN, these headlines completely missing the point of many of these talking points not pu- uh putting the headline correctly completely messing up things things what is going on reading comprehension just at the download we don't know how to read and fully understand what we're talking about one point people not understanding what latter half means latter half 
We are in the half. It's been four years. We'll probably have another four years in the generation. That means we're in the latter half. IG and I believe said latter stages. That's not the same thing. That means like there's like two years left. So that's an example of that. Um, someone saying that there are no exclusives this year from Sony. Not technically true, although I get what most people probably mean. They probably mean of substance, something that yes. matters, not an Astrobot, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't blame people for saying that specifically, but that's also important to point out. And then um, um, I, I have to say, um, Hiroki Tsutoki is incredibly harsh with a lot of this. Yeah. Um, and I don't feel like no one's talking about this. Why? Why? why do you think people are just missing this? Because... I think this is incredibly interesting. And Emmett, if we have to have a theme for the show, it is money, development, costs, how much we're using our resources and really draining them dry to make a lot of these things. Hiroki Toki coming out and saying they're not being held. I mean, he says right here what um. However, having said that, when it comes to the business itself, I think there's room improvement. And it has to do with how do you use the money or about mm. the schedule of development or how mm. to fulfill one's accountability towards development. It seems like he had a lot of problems and no one wanted to point out what the issue was. And he's like, well, that means no one's being held accountable for how much money we're spending. Probably he is. Mm -hmm. He's pretty damning. This isn't a financial call, too. So, yeah, he's he's. He might be kind of pissed. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. What did you get gather from any uh, all this? Um, I'll say the first thing. The I feel like a reason why this frankfulness isn't being more spread around is because the real headline of oh no big exclusives this year yeah. and oh no uh you know in the latter half when it feels like yes it's been four years it feels like we've only really had two. Because for the first two years way. you couldn't buy the thing. Yeah, it does. It, I don't blame people for thinking that, but. Mm -hmm. you know still so it, yeah it i think yeah it, i understand why it would bother but i feel like that's why people aren't talking about this more substantial portion of it True. um but as far as this goes i i'm really with him i really do feel like as sony as a company who's been successful doing what you're doing for all of playstation 4 the latter half of playstation 3 how do you get the PS5, this brand new console with all these bells and whistles, and it's just not hitting the same. It's just not making as much money as you hopefully would want it to. When you say, how is the money being spent? I, I like that you say that because that's a little bit of looking inward because, yeah. you know, yeah. everyone everyone wants to look at, oh, your game wasn't good. Days Gone was a bad game. Fire all the developers who made it. No, yeah. maybe it's Days Gone didn't need to be a hyper-realistic open world game. Mm. <laughs> Maybe it didn't need to be that. Maybe it could have been a double A. Maybe it could have been, you know, maybe you didn't need to see the pores in everyone's skin and you yeah. could have saved a couple million. Like, you know, things like that. If you're going to spend money on these ideas, make them do a sliding scale with the budget. Just because you're Sony and we all look at you to have the God of Wars, the Uncharted, maybe not every single game has to be on that level. You can go in the middle a little bit. And PlayStation used to do that in all the PS3 and a good chunk of the PS4. Um, they have not been doing that as much lately, I feel. And they're feeling the brunt of it. They're feeling the fact that, oh, now everything needs to be a Returnal. How smart can't just have Resogun and be the most played game as soon as the PS4 launches? We have yeah. to have a big budget thing. And so, you know, question of how we spend spending the money, that's it right there. Um, but, yeah, we. and then when you talk about the latter half, the light cycle, I think people see that and they get concerned. Not because they... I'm sure some people legitimately do think, oh, we got two years and they're going to put out the next one. Yeah, I Even think though so. that's not I, I, 100%. That, as someone who used to work on a game stuff, yes. People don't really yes. understand how, how a lot of this works. Indeed. So some people are actually misconstruing it, but I think the people who are actually in the know when it comes to video games, they look at that and there is concern with not just this, but also Xbox saying, oh, the next Xbox is a generational leap. So get ready for that one. The fact they're already talking about what's next is a bit of a bad omen. Because it says, hey, we understand that you're only going to talk about the future if you feel like the present isn't all that exciting or all that great. Now, I think that's because when they look around, when Sony looks around right now, they look at all the developers and most of them, if not all of them, have been working on some type of games as a service thing or they're working on a really cool single player game that's another two years out, three years out. 
So it's going to be slim pickings for a little while while they work on those games. And that's cool, but I think that's why they tell people these things to kind of get them excited for the future because the present's looking a little bleak. And it's going to take a lot of restructuring, not only because the games industry has been leading up to a point of no return when it comes to how you make games and whatnot, but also the pandemic exasperated a lot of that shit. Yeah, they and, they, yeah. they even admit that they don't know how to use the, st- uh, the statistical response because COVID fucked everything up. They don't they don't know how to use the data to say like, oh, how do we improve anything? Because it's just all fucked up now because the way COVID destroyed how they can read any of this. Um, that's a good point where you bring it up. They they say that I think in this call, if I was reading that mm-hmm. correctly, specifically yep. saying, yeah, we don't know how to read any of it, and it's pretty much useless to us. <laughs> I was like, damn, yeah, they're they're like really frank. Some you know, a lot of the financial calls. I sometimes I uh, listen to a couple of them just because I'm interested in them, and and they kind of spin things to sound good. It, this guy was pretty fucking straightforward with like how he answered stuff. Like he was honest. Like it really mm-hmm. does feel like he's just being honest and answering the question, which is. I don't know. Mm-hmm. A lot of financial calls I listen to is not at all. It's kind of spun in a way where it sounds good for them all the time. And he's just like, yeah, no, we don't know. We don't know. It fucked up. I mean, he, like I said, they straight up say like, yeah, no one's accountable. <laughs> like, No one, <laughs> no one will tell me why they're spending so much money. Where is it going? No one knows who and to blame. Um, I think I, that's inspired by, well, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, only just to quickly end. I, I think they reported that, um, they had a two. They had two billion. I hope I'm not fucking this up. I think it was two billion pro in, in revenue, and a billion in profit, and that means that they they're probably looking at like where where the fuck the money go? <laughs> like they're mm-hmm. they're probably wondering like what's what's happening over here? Where 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 are we spending this? How do we get margins bigger? And he goes on later to say like yeah, look at PC. Like we're looking at PC to get a little more aggressive there. Um, go go ahead. I, I want to hear what you were gonna say. I feel like this Frank tone is kind of inspired by not just Sony, but like the entire market overall, and not just the games market. Like everywhere is doing pretty bad. Every place yeah. has been. We've been seeing layoffs, not just at every game developer, but damn near every market is being hit by some massive layoff. Specifically, the tech industry. I'll say it's a yeah. lot of tech industry stuff that's kind of uh, people getting laid off here and there. Uh, my girl works for a tech. Uh, job and right when i started dating her they got hit with layoffs and she was able to dodge them but it's touching everyone including people i'm close to so you know i think that atmosphere and just also the general dread that comes with everything going on i feel like for normal people for normal people there's a lot of dread for us because not only do we see all the financial stuff happening but also stuff that's happening on a geopolitical slant on on the stage of like conflicts and whatnot and you know stuff going on in palestine all that stuff but when it comes to a marketing call everyone sees that all the good times of covid are running out but no one did anything during covid to make sure those good times stayed up they just hoped that it would keep going and now everyone now everyone's like fuck we have to readjust and i think this frankness is coming to a, a room full of people who other investments are also going down mm-hmm. and they don't want to hear oh it's great oh it's bubbly don't worry don't worry they want to hear what the fuck is going on with my money yeah where's <laughs> my this money this might be the last couple million i have left mm-hmm. and i think they dipped a bit on them on the mm-hmm. japanese market too after this i'm, I'm not really sure i have to look it up um Oh, <laughs> yeah. Little, uh, I had my window open and my dog just walked by. I was like, I was like, and then I was like, oh, wait, no, his wife's out there with her. Um, <laughs> to, to go back to what you were saying, though, yeah, I find it interesting. It does kind of feel like there's like a, a reckoning. Like, and we were talking mm-hmm. about earlier with the pencil. It feels like we're all kind of on the pencil and it does kind of feel like it's just going to break in, in half. And we got to figure out like what side of the pencil we're going to use. Are we going to inflate? Are we going to figure out how to deflate a lot of this? You know, everyone's talking about right sizing. Uh, we've already seen like, ten, I think it's tens of thousands of layoffs at the beginning of the year, um, mm-hmm. like because fiscal years are coming up, so they got to ask people now, so it, everything looks better, uh, in a few months. But I, I do appreciate though. I love Tony was just straight up. The president was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on over there," and I I love that just frank approach, and I do love it because one PlayStation is 
it's not like Xbox. It's much closer to 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 Nintendo. Nintendo needs Switch. Like they need that. There is no like, like that's mm-hmm. that, that's how they make money. Sony needs PlayStation. They they don't make fucking money off their TVs and stuff. There, even though they're very nice, it's nothing compared to their video game market and how much money they make. They make insane amounts. So that might be another reason why it's looked at. So frankly, because they're kind of the golden star. But they're also mm-hmm. the entire reason we're able to do half of this because they make so much money. I um, their movies are pretty good too. Uh, music, I think, is completely fucked. If I'm remembering correctly, their music division is pretty fucked up. And then um, I don't think TVs have been done well for a while. Although I they remember make a lot of camera sensors for phones, so that's probably decently profitable. But probably. it's nowhere near PlayStation level. Yeah. So. That might be another Frank reason where it's like, yeah, you know, they're great, but we could be they could be even better, which I know he would say he wouldn't get into it. But I would love. Oh, I would love to know what he give me some names. Well, yeah. And also, like, what does he think are the concrete points like he could tackle to like really cut down on spending? Like, is it because you have to imagine the most expensive thing is like talent. Right. But like, how Mm. do you how do you see mess with the how much they make like that's how i don't know i was just thinking about this because the frankness of this of this uh financial call reminds me a lot of the frankness of fin- of uh embracer group where they yeah. have been like no, we no are choice. out for yeah, yeah. we have no <laughs> choice we are out to fucking we'll do anything for our shareholders we, we will not do give a fuck. anything please let let, yes. let stay with us <laughs> absolutely but they're being similarly frank but because their attentions Sony's intentions are closer to pure. I'm not going to yeah. say they're pure intentions, but no, they're closer but, to pure. Yeah. It's it's a well, what have we done as an institution that has been wrong? Yeah. What what can we do instead yeah. of well, we fired all these people and we're still hemorrhaging money. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> don't know. We didn't plan on having to actually do work, so we're fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, Absolutely. So it's it's kind of refreshing to see them like look at what's going on structurally rather than just say, hey, just cut it off the bottom and make it fit. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that's all I wanted to really touch on with them because we did kind of touch on Sony like throughout the show. But suffice to say, though, I, I, I'm intrigued where they go from here. I think it's clear they're going to go aggressively into PC to try and expand their money. Because I don't think they really want to fuck with what's going on over there. Because it does kind of sound like he's like, yeah, no, no one's responsible. So, you know, I don't think they want to go in there and mess with stuff. Because you imagine they're kind of worried to, like, fuck with the Golden Goose. Like, it, you know, like they're mm-hmm. probably, probably, this is kind of the first time. I mean, let me know in the comments if, if this happened before. But I've never seen them be this this straightforward about PlayStation. And this, like, kind of. Dower. Yeah, yeah, like dour and, and straightforward and being like, yeah, no, we don't know what they're doing with the money. We don't know why it costs so much and no one wants to tell us who it is. Oh, this is so interesting. I can't wait to, to hear more about this. Anything else before yeah. we move on? Um, I'll say about this. I'm very interested to see. Yeah, they're going to be more bullish on PC and that's great. I'm sure Nixus is going to, you know, oh, day and date on all the new Nixus, releases. Nixus I know they're going to be like, working. Hell yeah. They're seeing this they're, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, we're probably going to see Nixus is hiring tweet in a couple of months. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Which is awesome for them. The thing I wonder is, all right, Nixus can put out all your new games as much as you want. How, when do you run out of new games? When do you start saying, hey, this PS3 team that's working on some stuff, trying to figure shit out? If they figure that shit out, do you want to look at Resistance 1 through 3 put on new platforms and PC? Do you want to look at fucking, I don't know, all these old PSN games, the iconic PSN games, like your your Last Guys, your Fat Princesses, your Echo Chromes? Do you want to see if we can get those on PC for a couple more dollars? Because like, if you're really trying to squeeze as much money as you can... Because it's all motivated by we want games that sell a lot, but we want something that's familiar and we're afraid of buying new talent to make new ideas. You have such a legacy PlayStation. You can take advantage of that if you want to. Are they going to is the question. That's what I'm very interested in. I agree. And with Jim Ryan gone, maybe they will because Jim was very straightforward with how he thought of legacy um, he didn't give a fuck about them. <laughs> he, mm-hmm. I, I'll never forget when he told the story of like, yeah, I was walking by and saw Grand Turismo two playing on a thing. He was like, who would want to play this? It's like, <laughs> like, like I'll never forget that story. That's so, so iconic to him for me now. And 
you have to I, I i i'm reminded that maybe we'll be in a different future and also you imagine with nixus like om, it's almost more valuable like instead of money being the most valuable thing there it might be like time because mm -hmm. if they're still handling pc ports maybe they're almost adapted to half of them helping other developers port their games while developing so it's a faster throughput maybe and mm -hmm. if that happens then we might not see nexus have many releases um from the uh under things but i would love that i would love nexus kind of cracking their knuckles and being like look like make it like Siphon a little filter. collection yeah yeah so be like get wild with it like just make like just random Ooh. stuff and get it out there and see what happens and you know see and that's also another thing where you could use to test you know they're always testing stuff like you tell like hey how much let's see what a fat princess princess does like put a fat princess out see mm -hmm. it sells well if it sells well hey maybe we make a sequel or maybe we do a big Dude. remaster and make it pretty and resell it or something i could see a world where a uh, fat princess second slice or whatever they want to call the the port of it put it on pc that is absolutely set to go viral in a yeah in a lethal company yeah. among us type way that's absolutely so the type of game that'll do that i think so too I, I think it would be wise for them to kind of try experiment now before there probably won't be time to because you if if they get more aggressive with pc port nixus is gone as like a relevant mm -hmm. They'll just be literally just doing ports now of games that are new and they won't have time for anything else. So I would like them to do that before that happens. Yeah. And we got Blue Point too doing similar things. So we'll see between both of them. What is Blue Point doing? I do they even exist anymore? They're making something new. I at this point, I'm set on they're not just remaking something. They are maybe doing a new entry in an old franchise, but they are working on something from the ground up more or less. I think the Insomniac League said like they're working on something original or it's used very specific wording. Like it was like, like, a, like blue point original game or something like it was some, I don't remember, but mm. it's uh, going to be Bloodborne to... tune and all but name, but go ahead. Oh my God. I'm a punch of wall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to quickly bring this up. We don't have to spend too much time on this, but um, did you play a mortals of avium any, by any chance? I bought it. I haven't gotten around to it, but I want to. So the studio um, went on, uh, well, <laughs> let's pack up and, and go from this. So technically an anonymous source told IGN, um, why would EA launch a $125 million project in FPS in today's market and expect it to succeed? Uh, this hmm. is actually a pretty interesting read. You can go over to Games Radar if you want to read the full piece. Won't we won't go into all of it here. Um, suffice to say, he has uh, or this anonymous, uh, anonymous employee person, he, she, whoever it is. Um, I'll try to use they for now, since we don't technically know. But they were saying, you know, why why did we get so much money for this? Why did they expect it to seize? There's a pretty big budget, forty million in marketing, which I don't know where that marketing went. And I damn sure didn't see it. Um. Oh, I think actually, you know what? Let me retract. I, I think I saw some YouTube ads, maybe. So maybe that's where I saw it. And I saw then, some YouTube ads and marketing yeah, cycles and whatnot. That's probably what I I probably saw that or something. And then the game, the actual game cost $85 million. Uh, and what's funny is they bring up like, well, we did things people like. We, we, we like, there was some crunch and stuff like that. And it's like, well, you, you kind of missed the most important thing, making it good. Make, making, making the game good. The game wasn't very good. That's why I didn't sell, guy. And now, I don't know the most again, we keep saying this, but like the most successful game was a single player game last year. So like we can't use these we can't say in one breath that and then being like, well, this single player game just never was gonna work. Like, mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. So I played Immortals of Avium. I played like twelve hours of it. It's not very good. It's a fine game. The magic spells get repetitive after a while. Um, I could go on and on about the, all the problems, and none of them have to do with it being a single player FPS. If mm -hmm. you, it, the, the, let's all say that when, like, it's not one to one, but like, you know, we were just talking about the Mandalorian game. Like, come on. Now, I will argue, I think this is much better said if you said an original game. Maybe we can start having a good discussion. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, an original IP. Um, first off, it was released in a horrible timing. I don't think EA gave two shits about this game. I don't know if you yeah, remember. It I was sandwiched. It. It, yes, it was sandwiched between massive games. So they clearly didn't give two fucks about this game. They threw it out and were like, 
who cares? <laughs> it probably mock reviewed horribly and they just let it go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here it is. Yeah, it was August and that's around Boulder's Gate 3 time. GG's <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 and I think Starfield as well. Starfield, yeah, Starfield as well. So that was a GG before it even came out. And also yeah. the writing. The writing is Well, it's it's the writing. It's also just from the get-go. You wanted to make a linear first person shooter campaign for full price, $70. Call of Duty hasn't sold a full price linear narrative campaign for $70. They haven't done that for two iterations at this point. And if they did, if they did without any multiplayer, that thing would not be selling the way it sells because people aren't there for the story. They're there to just have a thing to play with their friends. Immortals can't say the same thing. So if you're going to come with it, you I I don't want to the whole it's bad argument is a little bit harsh because it's like not because it's mean, but because it's like you don't know that people won't like it until it's out there. Yeah. So like you might feel happy with it. You might understand the vibe you're going for. You might understand, you know, what you intend, but artist intentions are not always what people are going to read into a game. So you, you can't know that until it comes out, but I think they should have had a little less hubris and say, yeah, we might be really talented. We might be a really good studio. There's no good reason for anyone's first game to be over a hundred million dollars. There's no good reason. You should have made something either smaller in scope or something shorter or something yeah, that should, doesn't look so good. It like, should have been shorter. Bad. Doesn't need an open world. Don't know who thought of that. Uh, it's it an open world game. It's like, how like do we, open it's zone, like open zone, open sandbox. But like, what the fuck? I don't who made that decision. I don't know. It should have been in 10 to 15 hour linear magic shooter. Very controlled. 40 bucks. Yeah, and it doesn't mm-hmm. need 50 different upgrades. The upgrade system is a mess. There's just so many things. And again, it's technically well made. An actual developer did well in that game. I have no problem with the, the way the game is made. It's all mm-hmm. the other shit in the game. The writing yeah. is, I think, the worst part of the game. When everyone, whenever someone talks, I'm like, oh my god. Like it's like like shocking how bad it is like it's it feels focus tested like it feels like you oh, watched the book bu- we, we got an ai to watch a million marvel movies and here's what they came out with that's what yeah. it feels like it might be focused but... shit mm-hmm. it is it is an ea game that they spent a shit ton of money on so it makes sense that it got fused but yeah people aren't gonna lose their mind and give game to year to a fuse and for a game like this you needed to hit critically if you wanted it to have a chance because no one's gonna run for that name they don't know what that name is and the dominoes were set to fall against you i'm sorry like it just was if you were releasing around diablo and like that year was just that's gonna go down in like if not Mm -hmm. best second best (laughs) like that was insane yeah and it definitely went down (laughs) (laughs) it definitely went down now, Emma has to go soon, so let's go through date updates, finish out the show. This is all your, um, what is the, is it not essential, but, but oh, P- PlayStation Plus, Plus game catalog stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the second tier? I always forget it. It's essential uh, and extra. It's extra. So, PlayStation Plus extra games are as followed. Need for Speed Unbound, The Outer World, Space, Spacer's Choice Edition, Tales of Arise, Tales of Zestaria. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Lego Worlds, Lego Jurassic World, Rogue Book, Rogue Lords. Something very interesting coming up in PS Plus Premium Classics. It's only available for premium members. Resistance Retribution. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> I, knew you'd, I knew you'd pop off. Jet Moto 2, Tales of Symphonia, Tales of Vesperia. Very excited to finally play Resistance the first, The first month that I've literally, and I'm being honest here, the first month where I've actually looked at premium and went all right all right i actually <laughs> might like if i had more time this is actually a bad month for them to do this if this was like mm. two months from now i'd be all I'd, I'd be on top of this right now i'd be playing every tales game um but right now but but i'd be like i'm like okay i, I kind of want to play but pay, pay for a month and pop pop through some of these tales games resistance Mm-hmm. I've only seen and lightly played some resistance. My dad, I watched my dad play them when I was, uh, when they were like big and I played a little bit of them, but I really only just watched him play them and never really played one. So I would love to sit down and actually play a resistance game at some point, which th- is that the PSP one? This is the PSP one. Yes. So. Uh, okay. The, the only good portable one. Um, <laughs> I played the other one. I'm sorry to say that, uh, but no, resistance retribution is really cool. That's one of the first Sony Ben games 
kind of you know one of the first times they got to do something other than siphon, siphon filter but yeah. overall a pretty good month uh outer worlds i know is good tales of Arise, i've owned for a while played a slight sliver of it it's good uh assassin's creed valhalla yeah, way too big but bang for buck great title um yeah horrible a lot of these games really cool really for valhalla, uh, valhalla? horrible it's like and I shit you not, you get you get to like level 200 something throughout the game. Each level up is 0.5 percent. X thing goes up. So it's like point like one percent more weapon damage. Like literally, they just refuse to make a, a skill tree. They're just so like, they're, here's decibels. Here's here's decibels. Just go to town. It was it was like shockingly bad. That's the worst part of that game because the game is good. It's just. Why is this horrible skills tree here? I don't know. Why did they do? I have no idea why they did that. They could have That's... cut that in half and made it way better. If they cut it in half, then it's they still want the same amount of gameplay out of that thing. So they cut it in half and it takes three hours to get through a level. Mm. Questions are going to start being asked. But true, you know. true. But you're leveling way too often. And again, you're leveling up like twice. Like I, you'd have like two skill points. So what's the difference of fucking cutting in half? I don't know. Man, I don't. Assassin's Creed's weird. It feels like they're it going is. deeper and deeper into mobile game design. They with each release. kind of. They uh, they nailed it with Odyssey. I don't know what the, f- I don't know what they're doing. Mm. Just copy Odyssey now. You nailed it again. You had Assassin's Creed two. You nailed it. You copied that. You mm. nailed it with Odyssey. Why aren't you just copying? I don't understand. Well, look, I'm gonna get around to Odyssey and have my time with that, and then leave that franchise effectively forever. Unless Assassin's Creed Red looks good. If it looks good, I'm back. But we'll see. Um, Hell yeah. So, yeah. Good PlayStation Plus update. Very excited to try Very. out some of these. Very no game passes for this this week. Uh, there wasn't there wasn't anything for obvious reason. <laughs> what queued up for the week? Of course, this is when I ask my co-host another question to end out the show, so Emmett can go do whatever Emmett does. And that is, of course, <laughs> what's queued up. This could be a game, a TV show, a movie, a podcast, a manga, a book, comic book, anything. What do you have queued up, Emmett? Well, first off, and most importantly. Part two of the Valentine's Day shenanigans that I've been doing. Yeah. That's what's coming up tomorrow on Saturday. Pipe. Uh, so, I <laughs> well, I should. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're piping it up like like the dance that Nico yeah. did. We're piping it up. That's what yeah, we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was just that was purely <laughs> Elijah taking over. Reaction. That was yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't stop. It. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad that my girlfriend doesn't like video games enough to watch this. To uh, watch three so, hours of it. Yeah, I think we're in the yeah, clear. yeah. Get to the very end. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're we're doing that tomorrow. So, we're you know, we're going out for dinner. We got like an activity to do in the morning as well. That's adorable. And yeah, so we're going to be having fun. And because we're hanging out this weekend, uh, we're going to probably hop back into a TV show. We recently finished Carol for Carol in the End of the World. Great show on Netflix. Okay. okay. And fucking cr- I love that show so much. Uh, long story short, it's about this girl who the entire world's going to end in like seven months. Oh. And everyone because of that everyone's like oh i'm gonna go out and do the things i wanted to do so the entire world is like in vacation mode permanently so everyone's just living their life having fun but then some people kind of enjoyed the daily routine of like clocking into work maybe go out for a drink and so it's looking at those people the people who love the routines what happens when that routine is shattered it's very fascinating i love that show. animated great art style highly recommended okay Uh, that's kind of cool so we fit yeah, so we finished that. Now we're watching the bear, and the bear is incredible. So we're gonna keep is watching that the, the bear. cooking one. <laughs> it is the cooking one with yeah. Io Everdy. Uh, she's great. Uh, Jeremy Allen White also great. The guy who just got casted is uh, the thing in Fantastic Four. He's excellent oh, he in that in show. So yeah, he's excellent in the show. So I'm okay. looking forward to him in that movie. Is that, uh, so, is that you know, on Netflix? Uh, Hulu actually, it is That's on Hulu. Hulu. The bear's okay. on Hulu. Okay. Um, so yeah, the bear's great. We're gonna probably watch some of that. Uh, as far as ooh, at some point we're gonna watch the Bob Marley biopic because my girlfriend is Caribbean. One of my best friends is Jamaican specifically. We're gonna have to watch that next weekend, most likely. Um, and game wise, already talked about Wulong. Already talked about Apex. Those are gonna be my babies lately. But I have to find something on Steam Deck specifically to get into because on the days where I'm not at home, I'm staying at her house. I'll be wanting to play stuff. And it's like, well, I can't live stream from my console. So I'm going to find me a new darling on Steam Deck specifically. Maybe I'll hop back into Nobody Saves the World because I was pretty deep into it. Uh, and that game's fun. But I'll let you know. You'll, you'll see me on Twitter tweeting about it, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, intriguing all around. Um, me and my wife need to watch so many shows too. We were told... 
another Netflix show. I think Father's Son or something like that. It's something. Ooh, oh, it's like Japanese, right? With the girl from uh, so. Everything Everywhere. Yes, yes, that's exactly yeah. what. That's exactly what I my think it's the brother's said. son. That's, yep. Yeah, yeah, brother's son. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. That's exa- that's funny. She said the exact. Yeah, she's from Everything Everywhere. Um, yeah. So we we, should, we need to watch that too. I don't think there's any really other plans other than continuing Hell Divers and finishing up. I'm hoping to have Persona 3 done by next week. I know that's pretty ambitious. Mm, um, I mean, I still have 50 hours, so we'll see. <laughs> but I, I want to have that finished because I need I need I need it done before Final Fantasy. That has that has to happen. So I need that done so I have time to play the demo, and then I'm gonna because I want to play the demo like right before the game comes out. Mm, I love doing yes. that. Uh, so I'll be doing that. And aside from that, that's, that's that's really it. I don't have any major plans for the weekend. Hanging out with the wife. Very looking forward to that. Have, having a chill Valentine's Day. Probably going to make some steaks. Love oh, making yeah. a nice steak at dinner. Mm-hmm. Talk about no, a steak no, out. I'm going to go buy a fat T-bone. Just the, the fattest mm-hmm. T-bone I can go find. And um, uh, she loves Love the ribeyes. So I'll get that as well. Um, oh yeah, five thirty, almost on the dot. I'm gonna let you go now because I know you have to go, and you 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 stayed over time. I apologize for that. Uh, I should have known. I should have known <laughs> we would have had a good episode. That was my fault. Uh, but again, thank you. <laughs> this was a great, great conversation as always. Um, I thank you again for joining me. Remember, uh, Emmett, we can find you Spoonful Vids. We can find you Video Game Utopia. We can find you. I mean, so many places. Uh, you can also find me. Welcome to the thing. Uh, yes, that podcast thing. is really fun, really good. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have a pretty good episode next week because a lot of weird shit's been happening in the world. So nice. good luck with that. <laughs> Taylor Swift. That's what the episode's about. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe a certain fraction of it, possibly, but we'll find nice. out. Nice, nice. And on that note, thank you all for joining me. And until next time, Goji.